The Knowles at 0-3 in the league for the first time ever. The Heels at a surprising 0-2. Both teams looking to get in the win column tonight here in Chapel Hill. Aaron Andrews has Coach Bowden to the sidelines. Thanks, Chris. Coach, your team has had a bye week since the loss to Georgia Tech. What did you have them refocus on that you could apply to tonight's game? Well, we gave them a couple of days off, which they probably needed. They probably needed some rest, you know? And then just get on the next game and touch straight, work out ways to win. A bright spot for your team this year has been the offense. What is key for them to tonight in tonight's game, going against the best defense in your conference? Well, we, we've got to execute. Yeah. If you don't, you play into their hands. I, I, uh, defensively, we got to stop the long play. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Chris. Aaron, thank you. That has been the real problem. They've given up so many big plays. Coach Davis in his third year knows all about the Knowles. He faced Florida State in the glory years when he was in Miami, but likes his chances better tonight. Florida State did win the toss, deferred to the second half, so the Heels will get the football first. And Dustin Hopkins, an excellent kicker, got a good leg, often reaches the end zone. We'll try to keep it away from Greg Little and Johnny White. It's a low kick. Bouncing just off the pylon, so they avoid the penalty. It's a touchback, and the Tar Heels will start at the 20-yard line. And we talked about T.J. Yates struggled a bit after an excellent Sophomore season a few more interceptions this year. Well, he was the most efficient passer in the ACC last year But there have been a lot of injuries this season on offense a lot of new guys playing wide receiver He struggled a little bit so far yeah. in this first but half. Don't you think though that at some point a quarterback Who has the experience of Yates has to step up regardless of the line regardless of the receivers and make a play It's been a frustrating season in the two ACC games these Tar Heels have totaled 17 First down to get Georgia Tech in Virginia. That's it. See the tight end, Pianalto, in motion. They're happy to have him back tonight. He's a weapon for eight, so they fire downfield. It's incomplete, intended for Little. The impact players? Sean Drone used to play safety, but he's now a running back, and he's got great quicks. He can take it the distance. Someone Florida State has to watch out for on defense. And, and, and a real safety cushion for the quarterback, Yates, is Zach Pianalto, a late addition, right at game time decision. Big to have him tonight. Robert Quinn, the sack master, a great personal story that we'll get into. 270 pounds, puts a 4 5 40. On second and 10, they hand it to Drone, who kind of weaves to the middle for about seven. <laughs> Coach Davis was saddled with probation when he was the head coach of Miami, and he went one and five against Bowden's Knowles when they had it going in the 90s. Speaking with Butch on the field before the game, he is intense. I've known him a long time, and tonight you could sense this game's big to him. Is it as wound up as you've seen him? Absolutely. In pregame, he was ready to go. Said he wished he could play in this one. This offense has struggled mightily on third down. They need three yards here. They hand it to Drone, and he busts ahead for a first down. It's a good early sign for the Heels. Well, the Heels come in tonight with some new guys playing up front, but they get a great push here on third down. Nice play call by John Shoup, the offensive coordinator. It has been a patchwork offensive line. Their starting center, Lowell Dyer, is still out, but they get back number 64, the excellent left guard, Jonathan Cooper. Usually do their best running to the left side, wouldn't you say? Yes, team? they do. Yates in a shotgun on first down. Excellent protection, and he drops it off to Little. Little on a crossing route near midfield. It's another first down for the junior converted running back. Forced out by Jamie Robinson. Chris, following up on what you're talking about, that offensive line, when they give protection and time to Yates, the receiving core, they've been open. Just hadn't had a chance to get the ball. Well, and this is what you do as a play caller. When you have a patchwork offensive line, like Chris mentioned earlier, quick passes, get the football out of your quarterback's hands so you can create a rhythm on offense. And this man over here on the right side of formation, number 17, Zach Pianalto, is a difference maker at tight end. He comes in motion. He's been injured since the Connecticut game. Again, picks his way, throws a shoulder at a defender, gets about four yards. Nigel Bradham forced him out. Mickey Andrews, one of the all-time great defensive Nigel coordinators. 26th season here, it'll State. be his final. Well, we talked about the injuries for North Carolina on offense. This Florida State defense has been decimated by injuries at different positions. This is uncharted territory for Mickey Andrews. But again, excuses they've talked about. This is the middle season. They've got good athletes at Florida State. Now it's time for somebody in that secondary and the linebacker level that have been getting walloped with big plays to step up. Mickey's a proud man, and he is embarrassed about the performance of his 
defense this season. You, you can understand why. Play action. Yates fires incomplete and almost intercepted. Corey Mangum, the rover, was in the neighborhood as the ball bounced off the hands of the fullback, Devin Ramsey. You see what John Shoup is trying to do on offense? He's trying to move the pocket and get T.J. Yates on the outside, get him away from that pass rush from Florida State. And you've seen this before because you quarterbacked against Mickey Andrews. Eight <laughs> men came that time. Was this dude wound up before the game, John oh, Shoup? It was unbelievable. <laughs> Yelling in T.J. Yates' face on every throw, giving him high fives. He kind of falls into Jim Levitt's league, doesn't he? Man. Three game high. He's yeah. worked up from a Chicago Bears offensive coordinator when he was a ripe old age of 30. Third and six, Yates over the middle. The catch is made. A little. A stiff arm throws it offender to the ground and has a first down to the Knowles 38. Greg Reed, the true freshman, got welcomed to college football there. Jesse, if the defense is going to give you a different look, you know, they better get to you, right? You're going to watch them dropping out of here and a lot of crossing going on in there, right? See them drop out in there? Now, Who's going to cover underneath? That's right. Well, you know what I love? Getting Greg Little the football in space. Here's a guy that used to play running back last season. 6'3", 215. You see the physicality that he brings to the field. We saw it for the Knowles defense as a timeout is taken by Florida State. Patrick Robinson is their best corner limping off. He was a guy that was questionable for tonight's game with an ankle problem. With the tail that hit bat off. Florida State defense. I mean, injuries everywhere. Look who's back at his alma mater. One of the most feared forces in football history. Talked to LT last night. Said he hadn't been back in decades here. Played for Dick Crum. There was a disagreement. He stayed away for a long time. Got the invite and decided this was going to be the night to come back and watch the heels. 1980, unanimous All-American. Really changed defensive football. There's a handoff to Ryan Houston. He's usually the short yardage specialist. They bring him in inside the 10 yard line at 245 pounds. Hey, you know, back to LT last night. I didn't even want to go up and say hi to him at the restaurant. <laughs> and last time I saw him. Absolutely, CJ, man. He on. made the first tackle on me in the NFL. 12 <laughs> yards down the field. He hits me on my thigh, gave me a thigh bruise. It used to be that you could block outside linebackers with tight ends and running backs until that guy joined the NFL. It's changed ever since. He was the first guy to tackle you in an NFL game. Yeah. Senior fullback Bobby Rome, 31 yards to Greg Little. They find a way with the gadget to get a big play. How often do you see a tailback from back in the backfield get the ball, not hit the line of scrimmage, have the time to throw the football down the field? John Shoup talked about these throws up to these wide receivers. There is no such thing as a 50 50 ball. It's ours or it's nobody's. Greg Little showing strong hands at the high point. Yeah, 6 3 over 6 foot. First and goal. There is Ryan Houston. And they tail back. They fake it to him, and this is Little on the end of the round with a wall of blockers and a dive to the end zone. A rough start. For Andrews defense, an 80-yard touchdown drive in less than three minutes for the Heels. What a statement by the North Carolina Tar Heels. That is only their fourth first quarter touchdown on the season. Great way to start this game. And John Shoup, nice job of mixing up the play calling. There was a trick pass. Casey Barth boots the extra point. So Ponder and that high-powered Knowles offense will go to work, but already down 7-0. What a first drive for Greg Little. I can assure you Mickey Andrews doesn't have a design of a play on defense where they all bunch up in the middle of the field. Carolina currently one of the best all-around athletic programs in college football, and you've talked about the, the greats who have been here, LT. A smile after the opening drive, and how about Julius Peppers, who for another generation was almost equally as dominant? You know, Craig, you talked about you played against Lawrence Taylor. I played against that guy. I think he sacked me three times over the course. He sacked me on a three-step drop once. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. 
<laughs> look at that look. He's still thinking about you. <laughs> He's staring at me. Getting, getting freaked out They've up here. Some great ones over the years. And a great start. We saw Little, three catches, and then the touchdown run, 58 of the 80 yards in that opening drive. Lewis Gibbons, Greg Reed, talented true freshman returner back. This is Gibbons. That is two. Gets the corner and turns it up. Knowles have been able to create some big plays in the return game this season. Lewis, kind of give you a feel for what we're watching here. Most of the time when you see a pass from backfield, you've got a toss sweep or something to get the back or passer away from the line of scrimmage. Go get him. Go tackle. Hit the guy. You, how often have you seen a running back or receiver throw a ball down the field that close to the line of scrimmage without getting hit in the mouth? When you see Ryan Houston line up at tailback, everybody assumes he's getting the football, but uh, 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 a little trickeration again from John Shoup using the end around to their big wide receiver. And now Ponder and this explosive offense go to work from their 25. High snap. Throws off the timing of the play, and Lonnie Pryor, the true freshman, struggles for just a couple of yards. 197 pass attempts without an interception for Ponder. He threw 14 interceptions last season. Everybody said that this year offensively would be determined by the decision-making of Christian Ponder. He's played so much more intelligently, Craig, makes great decisions. I asked Jimbo, I said, Jimbo, the offensive coordinator, have you simplified for him? He goes, no. He's just, the light came on. He figured it out. I can't give this young man enough. Now he's a super bright student as well. Very impressive in the classroom as you see Fisher who calls the plays. Here's a reverse. Jermaine Thomas handed it off and there's trouble as the heels are swarming. Juan Sturdivant, the middle linebacker, the leader, joined by Kendrick Burney who came off the corner. They lose 10. We just showed you the pass from North Carolina's offense where the linebacker didn't attack the ball carrier. Watch this time here as the reverse occurs, Jesse, how the linebackers attack in the How about that field. speed you're talking about? Jimbo Fisher said this UNC defense reminds him of an SEC defense. Big guys that can run. And now on third and 18, Ponder will have to throw into the teeth of the top-rated pass defense in the country. He's got four receivers. Fires far side to Easterling. Taiwan Easterling, did you hear the hit? The Norris Searcy denied him, and a three and out for the Knowles, and that's a very ominous sign. And they scored touchdowns on the opening drive. They did it against Miami, BYU, the Yellow Jackets. Big nights when they punt in their first possession. Jacksonville State, USF, BC, bad nights on offense. The psychology sometimes of having a great first drive and what that means to the rest of your team. John Powell was able to get it away. Not a very good punt, but it takes a nice roll. Neal's second possession will start from the 25-yard line after the 52-yard punt. Primetime, Texas, with Colt McCoy, who says his thumb is okay. On the road against the Tigers in Columbia, it's been a beatdown last year down in Austin. You know, we, we had Missouri a couple Thursdays ago, yep. and, they, and they fell apart in the fourth quarter against Nebraska. So you wonder, really, can Blaine Gabbert, who had a bad ankle in that game, recover enough to match McCoy's performance? You see this right here. Blaine Gabbert hadn't thrown an interception yet, but two games ago, he's thrown five now in the last two games. Texas, 19 takeaways on the season. Watch out. Gabbert's been limping around. He says he's good to go with that ankle that was injured when Dominican Sue tackled him in that Thursday night game. On first down, Yates chased, gets away, little shovel pass to Little, but this time they're all over number eight. No gain. You know, Nick really, Moody ran him down. It's really interesting. We talked to John Shoup, the offensive coordinator, this week and asked him the keys to success offensively. He said, we got to score on big plays. With all the injuries we've had, we can't afford to go 10, 12 plays down the field and score. But, Craig, that's exactly what they just did on that first drive. Well, they did it with a little trickeration, too. They yeah. got the big play from it. It doesn't matter how you get it, as long as you get an explosive play. And, and Florida State's <laughs> defense has been giving up explosive plays this year. And how. Mm. Some incredible ugly stats in the Knowles defensive side. They hand it off to Jerome. Good pursuit, and it's a loss. 
when you look at these the stats and you see the Knowles give up 18.8 yards per completion to their opponents, that's last in the country by 3.7 yards. That's astounding. They're giving up 6.9 yards per play, which is sixth worst in all of college football. That is unheard of from a Mickey Andrews coach squad. They're just making mistakes. There was a very nice defensive play right there. They played their assignments. They were in lanes. Their gaps were there. But these big plays are the results of bunching up like the touchdown run. Everybody's in the middle of the field. Nobody outside. I think they've also allowed a lot of third down conversions. The heels need 10. They moved the pocket for Yates. Just throw it away. But good coverage that time and some pressure, which has been rare this year, from a defensive end, Kevin McNeil. And the key was they got pressure with only three guys. And T.J. Yates wanted to go downfield. He had Geraney Boyd working on the sidelines, but great job covering in the back end because they had eight players in coverage. So Grant Shalek on the punt. Pressure. No flag. And a fair catch made by Greg Reed. 44 yards on the punt. Here's the second possession now for Christian Ponder after a three and out the first time. Seven zip heels. Take over down seven zip as the heels went 80 yards in their opening possession. 55 years in coaching and a month unlike any other for Bobby Bowden for the Georgia Tech game a couple of weeks ago. The show of unity was the idea of Dakota Watson, defensive captain. They did it at a bowl for the ACC championship game, I should say, against the Hokies a few years ago. Walked out. It was a wild shootout. Tech was able to prevail to drop Florida State to two and four. From the 31, Ponder back to throw. Well, there was a dart completion and keeping his feet and struggling for about 10 yards is Rod Owens, the senior. You know, Christian Ponder is coming off a career-high game against Georgia Tech where he threw for 359 yards and five touchdowns, both career highs. This guy has been automatic the last couple weeks. You've just seen him progress. And he's got four receivers in the 25 to 30 reception range. So he's spreading the football around. He's not one-handed. He's seeing the secondary making the right decisions. And there's five touchdowns against Tech to five different receivers. So, one first down. And the pistol formation, it's a strike across the middle of the field. Rod Owens. Active early, and he's into Carolina territory at the 35, 24-yard pickup. There have been many games like that against this pass defense. Watch the footfall right here. The footfall allows the separation to bolt to the inside and the delivery of the ball. It was wide open, Craig, and I love the conviction on the throw from Christian Ponder. He does such a good job of understanding post-snap where he's going with the football. Again, in, in total defense, this Carolina team behind only Alabama and Florida. Set eye formation. They fake it to Thomas and fire back far side. There's a blocker for Burt Reed. He gets about seven. Sports headed right now with Reese Davis. Let's check in with the studio. All right, Chris. Oakland Raiders coach Tom Cable will not face charges after being investigated on allegations that he punched out one of his assistant coaches. No charges against Cable. Sports Center coming up after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. And we give you current with the American League Championship Series. Yankees in command of the series, three games to one. Angels scored four runs before A.J. Burnett recorded an out. It's 4 nothing in the second. Grace, thank you. Are things ever copacetic in the Raider Nation? No. There's a throw and a hit. They rule it a completion. The ball picked up in the heels. They have a turnover as Demoris Searcy recovered the ball. They ruled it on the field, a completion and a fumble. Kendrick Burney delivering the blow. Let's yeah. check out whether he had possession now. I don't think he did. Real time up here, it didn't look like that the receiver had possession. Just turned. I don't know. He has to make a football move yeah. with the ball in his possession. I don't know if he did that there. What about the speed from Kendrick Burney, how he came up on this play? And Burt Reed has it, turns, and then the shoulder pad right on the football by Burney. That's all on Rod Owens, number 86, not making the block out there. It's a difficult block to make, but you've got to keep the initial defender off the receiver. 
Here comes the review. Is under further review. Has to be sufficient video evidence to overturn the call on the field. The call on the field is Carolina football at the Florida State 49. We'll take a break while well, they take another look. Butch Davis heads it off lobbying during the timeout. The review continues. Another look. Again, the ruling was that Burt Reed caught the ball, had it long enough before Kendrick Bernie got there and knocked it loose. Remember, the ruling on the field was complete, then fumble. You need conclusive evidence to overturn this. The question is, Greg, do you see anything here? I, I just don't think, even as the receiver's turning, the ball really is not firmly tucked. You don't in think so? I don't, I don't know. I think he I, pins it against his chest. It's a catch that way, but I agree with you. I mean, he doesn't ever get it tucked away, but to me, it, it kind of looked like he did have possession. You see Bernie jump up and celebrate the big hit, and Butch Davis pointing to the football, pick it up and run with it. <laughs> he saw what the ruling was, and Denoris Searcy, the guy who's replacing the second-team All-American Tremaine Goddard, who's now in the NFL, is the one that scooped up the ball. Either way right now, watching this UNC defense, they look very fast. <laughs> they are running sideline to sideline, playing very aggressive. You can see why this team came in tonight's game with so many big accolades statistically. They did, but I think that we all agree that this was going to be a big test for them. They haven't exactly faced a, a murderer's row of passers. They gave up 24 to Georgia Tech, most of it on the ground, lost that game. They faced, what, Virgina, East Carolina, a couple yeah. one double teams. Yeah. But you get a feeling at this point, midpoint in the season, that when you're on the field and you see the speed of the players on the field, you know they can play. Here comes this crucial verdict. After further review, the receiver did not possess the pass. It is an Retain possession, avoid the turnover that would have given the Heels the ball at midfield, and now it's third and four. Yeah, I've been here at the 31 yard line. You know, you're wondering where are they in the range of the kicker and you, you know the mindset. Yeah, this is Bobby in the Hopkins range, but it's yeah, not a yeah. not a comfortable range. And they, they're thinking seven right That's here right. in this possession. That's my point. Let's see how the Heels defense responds after thinking they come up with a turnover. team is in the new look all navy tonight you don't think the crowd got the memo <laughs> it was a surprise they didn't know when they showed up the team was going to look like this and a flag heels are pointing to the offense it'll be a false start oh boy. third and nine now the receiver doing with a false start. Come on, that's Reed who just dodged the fumble there. Two weeks in a row we've seen this. Remember last week, USS Cincinnati, a bunch of receivers jumping early, but two things wrong with that. One, third and four is much different than third and nine to an offensive play caller. Secondly, what you mentioned, Craig, now you're out of field goal range. Heels with three down linemen show some pressure. Hunter pulls it down. Shows his ability, but he can't get away. Stopped short of the first down by Bruce Carter, the three-year starter at strong linebacker. Really hard to take off and run against a three-man rush. You've got five at that next level, and they're up there hugging you. One guy who drops a linebacker will have a spy technique on the quarterback. Craig, we talked about Bruce Carter and that speed. He's a sub-4-5 guy playing linebacker, so Christian Potter makes a miss. He catches up pretty pretty quick. Without the penalty, that may be a first down. You see right there, Jesse, you talked to the difference of third and nine. A lot tougher to pick up against a fast defense. So only two for six beyond 40 yards is the true freshman Dustin Hopkins. And this is from 48. At the length. Right down the middle. So the true freshman turns around this trend and makes it from 48. The Knowles get three out of the drive after Very thinking nice. perhaps they were going to turn it over for that nice. replay review. Don't you always wonder about kickers under Bobby Bowden? 
but the history you can never <laughs> feel you can never feel comfortable <laughs> I worry about kickers under any coach <laughs> especially at this level <laughs> any level they've had a few eh? Graham Gano yeah. Janikowski of course but yeah. there have been so many infamous kicking episodes in the oh, man. Bowden career how many times have we heard or seen that expression from coach Bowden can you believe that ball wide left that'll be good for Hopkins confidence knocked it straight through how about this guy on kickoffs right now? Here's a team coming in. 38% of his kickoffs went for touchbacks. He's got a great leg, and because of that, the opponent's average starting field position has been their own 27-yard line. This has been a big area of advantage for Florida State because of this true freshman kicker. He had some troubles with the simplest duty. He missed four extra points in the first couple of games. People were wondering what's going on here. He's cleaned it up the last few. That's why Craig said you always worry about kickers <laughs> under any coach. And they weren't blocked or anything. It was just left, right, left, right. Another low boot from Hawkins. Taken on the hop by Little. And he plows to the 27. Well, here's one of the comments from Bobby Bowden answering his critics in recent weeks. My problem is age. If I was 50, nobody would be saying a word. You know what? As far as that's concerned. But at 79, he's too old. Every time, that's what <laughs> I found out when I first started. You know, the, it's always this way. Yeah, but what have you done lately? What have you done lately? You know, what you, uh, and what you used to do, that don't count. And I know it's that way, and I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, I know it's going to be that way. He'll turn 80 in November. Do you agree with that, that it's just about the age? And uh, yeah, you know what? Some of that, but a lot of people are evaluating what he's doing today. Drone a short gain as Reese has an update for us. Reese. Well, Chris, Bobby Bowden's son is back on the sidelines. Head coach at North Alabama, number one in the nation in Division II, taking on Valdosta State. Terry Bowden has 26 football bowl subdivision transfers. A couple of them hook up. Harrison Beck, the former North Carolina State quarterback, to West Holland, the former Navy player, and the Lions of UNA on top 7-0. It's a good story. Ten years away from coaching for Terry. Remember, we went to Auburn. They won a bunch of games to start his career, about 20 of them. Gates flushed out and rolls out of bounds. Marcus White forced him. Terry was instrumental in kind of talking to his father about the idea of the coach in waiting and kind of brokering the, the idea to Jimbo Fisher, I'm told, which is and, interesting. You know, and, and congratulations to Terry. You know, he's doing a great job at North Alabama. This family's been through a lot, as Coach Bowden said this week. You know, all my boys have been through this. It's a tough time. You got to stay the course. Bobby wants to listen to the headsets now as the Knowles defense tries to get off the field on third and six. Gates delivers another crossing route. A tackle made short of the first down marker by Greg Reed. Eric Highsmith caught the ball. True freshman on true freshman. It'll be fourth down. Don't you see the defense starting to pick up a little bit better now? Yeah, and you know, yep. we talked to Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator at Florida State, and he said he thought pressure at times rattles T.J. Yates, so he dials it up on third down, and a nice job by the secondary at Florida State playing downhill, allowing the catch, but immediately making the tackle. So the Heels will punt the second straight three and out following the 80-yard 10-play touchdown drive to open the game. Shalik, pretty good boot. And Reed, who just made the tackle to force the punt, calls a fair catch at the 26. 44 yards. Applebee's weekend menu. College game day is going to Provo, Utah for the first time to highlight the showdown in the Mountain West, unbeaten TCU. That was a great game last year. That defense from TCU against Max Hall and that passing attack from BYU, that's epic. You talked to both coaches today, Chris. I, I mean, did. The TCU's excited. got an offense now. It's not just defense, as you know, Craig. And, and Gary Patterson believes it's going to take some points. It may be more of a shootout than people expect it to be. The Cougars, who were destroyed, by the way, by Florida State and Provo, he says you got to score in that place. So he's not thinking, you know, 16-10 TCU style. <laughs> Here's Ponder under center now on first down. Hit. Ball loose. Heels recover. Big old Marvin Austin recovers the football. 
And Ponder very slow to get up, as LT says. That's what I'm talking about. No, LT loves to see that kind of stuff. Florida State is not very big up front on the offensive line, and they're facing a very physical defensive line from North Carolina. You know what? They're all big across the board, and the pressure at 6'3", 305, the push, getting to the quarterback is just, you know what? You got to really, it, wasn't it EJ Wilson that got in there on him? Yeah, he's, he's one that hammered him there, and then big old 305-pound Marvin Austin, who was the all-world recruit out of the D.C. area, scoops up the football. He was, he was thinking end zone, but a very <laughs> short return. But it sets up Yates and crew with the 13. Drone. Hit for a loss. Flying up. To make the stop was Jamie Robinson, the most solid defensive back. Really, a couple times early in this football game for Florida State offensively, they get away with the turnover earlier on the, on the last drive, and now coughing it up. A great pass rush. I don't think they're used to seeing that yet. You know what we haven't seen in a while is a quarterback at Florida State on the bench. You see Ponder over there snapping his hands, knows he made a mistake. And he's hoping the defense can bail him out. Empty backfield and five wide receivers on second and 11. Pressure, Yates across the middle, and a touchdown! Ed Barham, the tight end. And they make Ponder pay for the fumble. A quick strike after the fumble. And Barham is first to touch that, only his third catch of the season. Empty backfield. They put a lot of pressure, and he got rid of it quickly, Jesse. It was a nice job by UNC, the quick strike mentality coming off a turnover. Ed Barham, normally a blocking tight end, they're able to just kind of sneak him down the middle of the field. TJ Yates doing a nice job drifting on that play. You guys like what John Shoup Shoop dog, if you will, the offensive coordinator dialing up tonight. Yeah, you know what? And, and Jesse, this is an interesting call here. This is another little shoop design play here. The shoop dog. <laughs> He's got Barham over on the left side. Look at him right there. They're off the line over here. He's an eligible receiver. Florida State doesn't pick it up. They're looking at him as a big old tackle sitting in there. He runs so right he by, by himself, runs right by linebacker level, and they're thinking he's a tackle. You're in right by Kendall Smith. You see T.J. Yates right there just kind of drift a little bit by himself the time he needed. Didn't have to throw that hard straight ball, just lobbed it over the linebacker. Great touch. <laughs> and a nice leaping chest bump with Mike Paulus, who's the backup quarterback. LT thinking, I picked a good night to come back to Chapel Hill. Look at that. See, I saw that one time in a football game. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see many smiles. Did you? I, I, we had a block one time, passing game, and I'm supposed to block LT, and the guard doesn't come out to help me. Of course, it took him no time to beat me. And I turned around and screamed at Steve Grogan, ah! And, he, and, and LT really took it easy on him. And, he, and he I was did? walking back to the hill. I said, hey, LT, thanks for taking care of me. Goes, no problem, man. I couldn't do that to you. <laughs> really? You're telling well, me Big Amino and LT had a, had a compassion? He was for me that moment. I don't know why. Welcome to the NFL, by the way, yeah. Craig. See you in a second. They got beaten like 0.5 seconds. <laughs> now, this feels good for an offense that has struggled big time against ACC opponents. We talked about it. They didn't even get in the red zone against Virginia. Didn't even make it there. But how about that play call? You got the, 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 your tight end lined up looking like a tackle two receivers off the line of scrimmage boom in the end zone good little wrinkle and ponder that explosive offense some work to do in a 14-3 hole Casey Bark his brother Connor was a four-year kicker here boots it to Reed Reed escapes he is so dangerous true freshman LT by the way talked to the Tar Heels team last night let's take a listen Player Warren Steyer. Hey, Doug. That's number 20, huh? I got you. Nah. Yeah. We were the third best defense in football behind Dallas Cowboys and Pittsburgh State. <laughs> 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 hey, we didn't even get scored. Oh, hold on one second. <laughs> He's well, they got the third best defense in college football this season coming into this game. And Ponder hands it off. And then Thomas swarmed on. Aaron? 
Let's see if Aaron's uh, mic is working. Can you hear us? Oh, can you hear? Hey. I, I, I got you. Yeah. These things work on live TV. Hey, we're going to have to keep an eye on Christian Ponder's left elbow. When he was hit, he fumbled the ball. I'm not sure if he landed on it or if a guy grabbed it, but uh, he, he was over on the sidelines kind of flexing it, stretching it out. They tried to put ice on it, but remember this offense wasn't on the sideline too long as UNC converted and uh, scored a touchdown. No time for an ice bag, huh? And keep an eye on it. Thanks, Aaron. Play clock at four when Ponder snaps and fires. Rod Owens in traffic. Well, yards after the catch, they are determined to limit that. And a lot of closing speed in that secondary. Matching up, trying to sneak underneath with a quick ball. Just four defenders, a defensive lineman, Jesse, putting a lot of pressure on that offensive line. It doesn't look to me right now that Florida State offensively was ready for this speed they're seeing right now on all three levels of the UNC defense. They're coming to us as advertised. Jimbo Fisher said it again. This team looks like an SEC defense. They can run. They're seeing it right now. Okay, that is the ultimate compliment in college football, isn't it? Pressure again. Ponder slips it off. It's a screen. A flag is down as Jermaine Fortson takes off. Jarman Fortson muscled down at the five by Kendrick Bernie. 60-yard play, but let's check the marker way back at the line of scrimmage. There is yards after the catch. Fortson caught it in traffic and took off. Pass interference. Offense. Now they call Taiwan Easterling and it's coming back. And you know what? This is just one of those. The block occurs before the ball gets in the hands. Watch the block coming from Easterling. Absolutely. <laughs> you call you know, that a pick, my friend. I would say just go ahead and block him. And that's, Knock him up. That's so unfortunate for Florida State. That was the perfect play call. UNC brought pressure. Jimbo Fisher throws the slip screen underneath it and gets his big play receiver Fortson out in the open field just like that. Undisciplined football again for Florida State. It hasn't just been turnovers, big penalties. Because is that the design of the play, though? He's not supposed to be obvious, but isn't that kind time, of the idea? It's supposed to time yeah, up. you got to time it out, you yeah. know, and you got to be patient as a receiver, but you can't take too long because we've already seen one guy get hit right at the reception. you got to get out and block him. We had talked to Jimbo Fisher. He had said that they weren't anticipating to get a lot of big plays against this defense. This defense kind of keeps everything in front of them. They have to capitalize when they have those opportunities because they don't come off them. Instead of first and goal, <laughs> it's third and 20 at their 20. Ponder having to hustle out there. Five on the play clock. Snaps it with a second to spare. Shows the arm strength. Fired into Carolina territory looking for Burt Reed. Here comes a punt. Really obvious that this offensive line at Florida State can't handle the four-man pressure. They're moving the pocket, busting the pocket, trying to throw quick underneath the little slips because they can't. They don't have time in the back. We had talked about Robert Quinn earlier at defensive end, seven sacks coming into tonight. He pinned his ears back on that obvious passing down, blew by the left tackle Andrew Datko. Nine seconds in this first quarter. Powell back to punt. Move back five yards. Denoris Searcy, the returner, a dangerous man. He brought one back 77 yards against the Citadel. False start. Offense, number 12. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. And Searcy ranks 11th in the country in pump return yards. It hadn't done it since high school. They, and he's a, he's a junior. They said, go back there against the Citadel. He, he brought one back at the end zone. And, young man, that's, that's your job now. You keep doing that. Steps almost blocked, gets it away. A low kick. And seriously, will let it die. Bruce Carter, <laughs> three year starter, a linebacker who plays special teams like a lot of the heel stars, almost got it. 54 yards in the punt, end of the first quarter. 14 3, Carolina. One shot, two shot, two shot, somebody don't make me happy.
beginning of the second quarter here in Chapel Hill. A long touchdown march to open the game for the Heels. And then they cashed in a fumble for another touchdown. That's Dakota Watson, number 36, on the sidelines. And that's bad news because the senior is their only consistent pass rusher. He's their vocal leader in defense with a groin injury. If he comes out there, Aaron Andrews tells us, just going to be in some situations like third and short, but can't really have an impact, Jesse. That's tough. As if this defense needed more injuries, especially to a key guy like that. Yeah, it was kind of a game time decision, but doesn't feel explosive enough to make an impact. This is Little trying to spin away, and he picks up about four as we check back with Reese. All right, Chris, another kind of football on ESPN2 and ESPN360.com. The MLS Chivas USA against Chicago Fire. Chicago needs a win or a draw to clinch a playoff berth. They are winless in their last six matches, but they do have four draws during that span, approaching halftime on ESPN2. Thanks, Reese. And second down. They hand it ahead to Houston. He's a short yardage back, and then he gets very short yardage. One thing the offensive coordinator, John Shu for UNC, told us is he didn't want Florida State to be able to just pin their ears back and get after him. So he wanted to use the quick count, try to mix things up on the line. You're seeing it right here. That was great success, Craig. Duke said he didn't want to let them screw their cleats in the grass. Yeah. Fowler said, you know what, though, at times this year, they've looked better when those cleats stayed in the grass and didn't come out of their stands. <laughs> I think Mickey would agree with you, too. It's yeah. the first time John Shoup's coached against Mickey Andrews. They're going to march it off. We're not sure that the referee's microphone wasn't working, so we don't know the explanation, but it's going to move the ball to the 49, so the flag in the knolls and Mr. displeasure is shown. Yeah, Mr. Alexander, guilty party. 40 yards. Four penalties so far for the Knolls. Carolina has not been flagged. Told a punch thrown by Mr. Alexander. If you look at that after this play, short gain, Nigel Carr stopping Houston. Now keep an eye on number 16, the backup linebacker, filling in for Watson tonight. Yeah, Mr. Alexander, 16. Let's see if he throws it. Mm. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that just, that, man, Jesse, you know what? You, you wonder where a player's head is when they do something like that. I think it's frustration. We'll get in more about how bad this defense has been this year. It's uncharted territory for them, and they have a lot of pride, but I think sometimes you see the frustration from those players. Hey, mister, that'll cost you 15 every time. The smack to the head. And stutter step, Rohn darting ahead. He's got a first down at the 40. We asked Mickey Andrews if you had to whisper in their ear a bunch this season. One of his favorite expressions, he said, we're way past the whisper phase. Watch this whisper here. How slow this play it takes, how long it takes for it to develop. I mean, you know, Florida State's got to go get the football. They're taking their time behind the backfield. Stop, start, go. Where's the defender? A lot of young guys, a lot of hesitation, not very much <clears throat> swagger, maybe, maybe not very much mean streak in this defense either. Yates under pressure and he'll go down. So that's the first sack for this Knowles defense. And boy, they haven't had many this season. You take out that Jacksonville State game when they had seven sacks, they had five in the other five games. That's hey, it. Jeff, Chris just mentioned nasty guys out there. When you played against Florida State in the late 90s, they were out there. A lot different. <laughs> and I asked Mickey Andrews this week, I said, what's the biggest difference between the great defenses from the 90s and the late 90s and now? And he said, you know what? We're not as mentally or physically tough today as we were then and he said that's on us as coaches we got to go out and recruit players that can be self-motivated but have that nasty streak Florida State needs to be more like that the second half of the season this is the third sack of the year for McNeil and now a throw downfield and Yates had a man wide open here comes a flag Dwight Jones the rangy sophomore receiver was running free but he was grabbed on the way down the field yeah I think this is a good grab too Save a touchdown? It's absolutely. Holding. Defense. Number 21. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Look at the cells job oh. there by the offensive line. Kyle Jolly left tackle coming out showing screen. 21 Robinson coming up thinking screen. Patrick Robinson, the cornerback, the senior, doing a very senior thing right there. He knew he got blown by doing whatever he could. Just to slow down Dwight Jones. He's slowed by a bad ankle. What was he doing though? Jumping the receiver at he, that point. He had that tackle coming out. He thought screen jumped up on him trying to make a play. 
drone for about three. Again, it's been just a, a series of mental mistakes this season by those defensive backs of Florida State giving up so many pass plays. A bunch well, I mean, of penalties, too. And they come into this game giving up 254 yards a game through the air. That's the worst pass defense in FSU history. Again, you're just not used to seeing this from a Mickey Andrews coach team. And, you know, the players aren't used to it. Mickey Andrews has been very frustrated so far this year, all in place. Tried to simplify things to cut down on mistakes. That hasn't worked either. Yates flips it short. Tackled for a loss. Moses McCray, defensive tackle, having to fill the big shoes of Bud Thacker, who's out. Nice play. There have been a lot of filling of shoes on this team. Yeah, yeah. You know, the one thing you can't overcome on the road, you have five penalties as a football team for 50 yards. Your opponent, the home team, has none. They're playing smart football over there. Well, and, and that's really something that Butch Davis, that's how he coaches his team, right? We ask, we talk about him, and he says, <laughs> hey, think Bobby says, hey, let's go get penalties? <laughs> no, but you know what? Play close to the vest. They don't, they don't yeah, hurt sorry. themselves. I'm with you. They're in marginal field goal range here at best in third and eight. Inside handoff. Little takes it. Shows why he was a very good running back before moving to receiver. Wow. Doesn't have first down yardage. Gained about four. Mr. Alexander on the stop. So we'll see if Casey Barth comes on for a field goal attempt as long as 40. Offensive guys staying on the field here. We, we met Little in the elevator yesterday. He's a big guy, isn't he? Hey, here's the advantage. Of when you have a good defense, you can get into four down territory. That's something John Shoup said. What's nice about playing offense when your defense is dominant, your head coach will let you go for these type of plays. They've converted on five of seven fourth down plays this season. Oh, Yates, trickeration, a direct snap to Drone, and he gets the first down. So the quarterback going to the sidelines like there was confusion, and they snap it. We've had three trickeration plays now by North Carolina tonight, but as you walk off and you go this way, it's just a power right side. Watch all the Florida State players. Look at them all walking around, looking to the sideline. Hey, what's going on? I like that trick play. That's Sean fun. Drone gets the direct snap and nice physical running. Good salesmanship by wow. T.J. Yates. Wow. <laughs> John Shoup, one step ahead tonight of old Mickey Andrews, a man that he has enormous respect for. Tenth play of the drive, Yates firing for the end zone. Jump ball broke it up. Xavier Rhodes, the true freshman, went up and battled White Jones. You just, second, that's, uh, that's Robinson. You just said it, Chris. You know, John Shoup coaching against Mickey Andrews first time. The respect that he has. And, and you know, we, we mentioned to Mickey Andrews in our meetings this week. Man, you've done a great job. You've had a great career, but it's, it's kind of fallen apart here. And it, his image is taking a blow. And I love the play calling by John Shoup in this game so far. Remember, he's got a 12-year pedigree in the National Football League, was an offensive coordinator for the Bears when he was only 31 years old. You're seeing different formations, shifts, motions, quick counts, trick plays. He's throwing the whole playbook at Florida State. Play clock was at five, and the Heels take a timeout. Carolina trying to build this to a 21-3 lead. A little urgency now for this and battled Knowles defense. Here in Chapel Hill. Second quarter. Heels on the move again. Already up 14-3. After converting at fourth and four with a little trick play. It's all been going right for an offense that has really struggled coming into this game. Gates fires for the end zone. Loops it all in a diving attempt by Dwight Jones. Couldn't get it. Now you mentioned that offense. That was a very key addition for them. Zach Pianalto, their tight end, that they didn't know they'd have him coming into this ball. Oh, and that's a big loss for UNC. Butch Davis said he could be Jeremy Shockey, Kellen Winslow Jr., Bubba Franks Light. Three great tight ends that Butch Davis coached at Miami. He's the guy that caught the ball against Connecticut to tie the game and injured his foot landing on an opponent's foot. Hasn't played since. Got in there briefly earlier. Third and ten, Yates hammered. He got pressure from the blind side. It's incomplete. No catch. 
Pass intended for number 33. Marcus White is still looking for his first sack. Got there just late, but influenced the throw. Look, look at the way that they've created. Mickey Andrews has changed up his looks. He brought three, dropped one out of a fire zone into the middle of the field. So he's changed his look. Mickey Andrews is trying to find the right combo. There was a time when he could just line up four guys on the line and let them go pin their ears back. Those days are over. So here's Casey Barth. Just one of three from 30 to 39 yards. This is from 39 and a couple of flags here. Penetration by the Knowles. See if they were drawn on. There are flags on the play. Connor Barth, you remember if you're a fan of ACC football, 54 field goals, a career record. And little brother Casey getting his turn. Came here as a walk on. Offside by contact, number 95, defense, five yard penalty. Repeat the fourth down. Still fourth and about four. Kevin McNeil guilty of the penalty. The sixth penalty now in this game for Florida State. UNC has yet to commit their first penalty. Mickey spitting and fussing over there. So now Casey Barth from 34 yards. Sneaks it inside the upright. And the Heels build the lead to 14. Christian Ponder and that high powered offense in a hole. A little urgency now. Great career, Bobby Bowden. Began Sanford, West Virginia, and then to Florida State from 1976 until now. Will this be it? Will Bowden get his wish? to coach at least one more season before Jimbo Fisher the coach in waiting takes over for 2011 in which time if they don't give him the head coaching job they'll pool five million dollars part of that unorthodox somewhat sloppy coach in waiting and there's a lot of a lot of guys with titles in this on this staff you have the executive head coach Chuck Amato the associate head coach Mickey Andrews the assistant head coach Rick Trickett coach in waiting and the head coach. There's going to be a lot of formers in front of those name titles down the road. And Lewis Gibbons and gets the corner, gets to the 25 yard line. And of course, one of the major issues going forward, Jimbo Fisher calls the plays here, will have to be allowed to, to make some decisions on the future of the defensive staff. That's a couple times the like said, when we got here, when we got here, yeah. he kept saying, as if this whole staff were new. He was referring to him and Lawrence Dossey, the receiver coach he brought in. Interesting question, though, a concept. I mean, you've got a coach in waiting if he is the guy that makes the decision, the new defensive coordinator next year. Hmm. I'd have to think it makes sense, wouldn't yeah. it? He's going to be the coach down the road. This is Jermaine Thomas. And the Seminoles before that play were just 35 yards in total offense, 55 yards in penalties. Coach in waiting had become you know, popular in recent years. Joker Phillips waiting to take over. Rich Brooks has a contract through 2011. Mac Brown's not going anywhere for a while. Well, and Brett Bielema was a coach in waiting at Wisconsin. Chip Kelly. Only for one year, though. Yeah, so at Oregon and Danny Hope one year as well yep. at Purdue. This is the third year for Fisher as you know, quote, yeah. coach in waiting. And I think it works at Muschamp at Texas. I mean, that's a good situation for Will and for Coach Brown and the whole situation. Thomas, and the flag is down. This is before the play. Thomas got the need to get involved. Good hands, receiver. Made a couple of plays in the running game this year, but still averaging under four a carry. Offside. Defense, number 92. Five yards in the previous spot. Repeat the down. Now going back to Bobby Bowden, you know, the question is, will he be here next year as the head coach? I think a lot of people were spoiled with all those great years of success, 14 straight years in the top five. And there's a lot of people that are going to look at not just what's happening this year, but what's happened over the last five years. That they haven't been as dominant as they were back in the 80s and 90s. Not by a long shot. We're talking about a team in the last four plus seasons is 17 and 17 in the ACC coming into this game tonight. I, I, speaking of this game tonight, how about this this stat here against this football program 
They're 14 1 and 1. Yeah. Right? So this is a team that's owned North Carolina, and, and it looks the other way around here now. Well, and their players, Christian Ponder, came into tonight's game saying, hey, we're going to shock the world and beat UNC. That just goes to show you where this program is today as opposed to where it used to be. Somebody tell him number seven, Ed, he's a smart, smart guy, but you don't shock the world by beating Carolina when you're at Florida State. There's a two point underdog. Ponder fires as an open man. That's Fortson near midfield. Another first down. I think you go back to Bobby Bowden again. I really think it's a matter of results versus the principle. If you go back to the beginning of 2005, this football team is only 33 and 25. But the principle, Bobby Bowden built Florida State. When you go back and look at what he's done, I mean, can you really not allow him to coach next year? Oh, yeah. There's going to be some pressure. And I think these last 12 days, he's had to answer lots of questions. I think ultimately it's going to force Coach Bowden to name a day. And tell him when. Little option look. Ponder shows his strength in leg drive. Picks up about three when there wasn't much there. Quinton Coples and Sturdivant on the tackle. And, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, I thought I heard, and I might be reading into what I'm listening to today. He was talking on Sports Center earlier this afternoon about, you know, I thought I could get away with waiting until the end of the year like I always do and then tell everybody what I'm planning on doing. I'm coming back or I'm not. But these last two weeks, maybe they're not going to let me do that. Well, I think the big debate for many is if what's best for Coach Bowden, they don't believe, is what's best for the program. And what, what's bigger, the program or the legend who built it at this point? There's a little slant, another catch by Fortson. Nope, incomplete. <laughs> Charles Brown arrived soon after the football knocked to loose. One big question I have is recently Bobby Bowden has said he wants to coach more years plural. Mm. So you, you expect that means through the end of 2010 because we know Jimbo Fisher is owed $5 million if he's not the coach by 2011. But he's being secretive about it. He's not just coming out and saying, hey, I want to coach till the end of next year. I, I don't understand why he just can't come out and say that. I think he needs to now. I think this might force him into it. Yeah, I'm with him. Third and seven. A little trickeration from the Noel. So flag is down as the entire offensive line is still sitting there. <laughs> All five offensive linemen just now coming out of their stance. <laughs> Rick Trickett, their offensive line coach, coaches that. I've seen that before. Unbelievable discipline. If they feel they've gotten a defense off sides, they don't even move till the play is over. It's a former Marine coach in there right there. <laughs> yeah. It's not Ponder's dad, drill sergeant. <laughs> Offside on the defense, number nine. Five yard penalty. Remain third down. And drew Marvin Austin off. Look at this guy. These guys yeah. are frozen here. Yeah, but wouldn't you like, though, Jesse, your line to come help you a little bit? A little Just bit. in case it's, something breaks down? It's unbelievable discipline. They do this every week. If they get a free play, those guys don't move. It's amazing to me that not even one guy flinches. All right, here you go. got eight rushes for minus six yards tonight by this Florida State offense. And you got, you know, this is two down stuff here, I think. You got to get in there. This offensive line, this offense, they don't want to punt and give it over. They got to get a first down. Thomas next to Ponder. Quarterback rolls. Takes off. Bumped into a blocker and takes a loss. And now it's fourth and four. Different call. Mm. Thought right there, Christian Ponder had his receiver Jarman Fortson open in the flat, but you're seeing that speed. Kevin Reddick, the true freshman, moving downfield. These guys can run sideline to sideline. Again, something Florida State is not used to seeing. And Craig, now they're going to punt. Yeah, he got felt it was four down territory, but the two yard loss makes it a different deal. Down by 14, Ponder's group has to give it away again. You see Jimbo Fisher telling his junior quarterback, he's open. Just get the football out of your hands. The play's there to be had. That's usually something he does pretty well, right? Gets yeah, it out of there yeah. quickly. He hasn't made those mistakes this year. So there's the delay. They'll back up Sean Powell five yards. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. You agree with the punt decision and down 14 for the 45? I think so. When you went back fourth and four or five, I thought that was the right deal. You know, you get it to fourth and one, new game. And especially with the defense you have and the way this supposed worst offense in the ACC is marching the football down the field on you. One headed for the sidelines. A flag is down. There is a flag on the play. 
kicked the ball back to 15. Juan Sturdivant there signaling holding. And when did it happen? During the kick, it was holding by number 12 of the receiving team. That, that penalty will be administered from the end of the kick. Ten yards. First down. So the heels for field position, but leading Bowden's team 17-3, midway second. Saturday night, the top-ranked Gators off the home scare against Arkansas. Take on State in Starkville, 7.30 Eastern time. Dan Mullen, of course, the former play caller for Urban Meyer, the boss of the Bulldogs night. You can tell Tim Tebow what it's like to play in a cowbell country. Starkville, right? not an easy place to go. In 2000, we were undefeated <laughs> heading in there. We lost a shootout to Mississippi State. All I remember is cowbells everywhere ringing. <laughs> not good memories from Starkville. That is not a gimme win for no. Florida either. But you know what? Because it's not a gimme, I, this is one of those that you would assume is going to be hard, but Florida on I thought goal. their offense would awaken against Arkansas. It didn't happen. A, a number one team that's failed to reach 24 points back-to-back -back games. Ryan Houston, short game as the Heels begin from their worst field position. Guys, we knew it was going to be a matchup of good offense, good defense. So far, the good defense of Carolina's winning that, but poor offense coming in versus poor defense. Carolina's winning that one, too. It's been a complete game so far from Carolina. They're also winning the penalty battle. They're playing smarter. They've been able to put long drives together on offense. And now we're going to see Shoup and this offense realize what the game and the score is, right? And he said that. Be aware of the score. you got a good defense. Don't do something stupid down here late in the second quarter to get the other team back. Back in it. You're calling for another run here on, on second and eight, you think? That's what Shoup was saying the other day. <laughs> That's what it is. Drone, Sutter steps. He's pulled down. Good looking tackle in the middle of the line there. Jacoby McNeil, the true freshman. Aaron? Chris, just an update on uh, North Carolina tight end Zach Pinalto. We saw him walk off the field into the locker room. This guy's been dealing with foot injury. It's not that. He was actually shaken up a possible head injury. They're saying uh, he's questionable re to return. And of course, Butch Davis telling us we need this guy in order to beat good teams. Interesting, Aaron. So not that foot fracture that has kept him out. Something else to keep an eye out for number 17. The mid time on third down. They just hand it off again. And this is Drone fighting. Very near first down yardage at the 18. Looks like he's got it. That's an ex safety right there carrying the football. You see that ability to get north south, looking for contact, able to push those markers I, forward. I like this story. And he went to Coach Davis and he said, You know, Butch, I think I can help you more as a running back than I can as a safety. And it was a smart decision because <laughs> he was really struggling at safety. He knew he had to move <laughs> positions, try to help this football team out. What, what was the story, Chris? His dad's a minister, and we asked him if it yeah. was tough. And both parents are non denominational ministers. Yeah, he said it was. A bit like Joe Jackson. There was some tough love growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Drone, I mean, it, 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 Sean Drone's an interesting story. Here's a guy, again, that played safety two years ago. He gets a chance to play running back last year. He runs for 866 yards, which is the most a UNC tailback has had since 1997. Yeah. A lot of production right off the bat. He's got a lot of ability. So three runs got them the first down, improved the field position. It's drone to the left of Yates. They give it to him again. It's time the Knowles wrap him up. Offensive coordinator John Shoup told us the greatest game he ever called was when he was an offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears. They were playing a Thanksgiving Day game against the Detroit Lions, and they got up 21-0 in the first quarter. Dick Drawn, then head coach, walked over to him on the sidelines at break and said, I want to be eating dinner at 5 o'clock. They didn't throw the football again. They throw it here. A flag is down as Yates looks deep. Jeremy Boyd headed to the end zone. Let's check the flag. This is coming back. Holding offense number 33. You now the fireworks going off after the 81 yard completion, but a hold will bring it back. Yeah, North Carolina just wasted a lot of gunpowder in that fireworks there because that is holding on the right side. But Florida State now in this game, they've had a big play call back against them as well. Yeah, a 60 yard gain that would have given them first and goal wiped out on an offensive pass interference. This takes away the touchdown. 
you know, UNC has been struggling to find big plays from the wide receiver position. They just showed the replay, Jesse, on the board. I don't know if Yates saw a hold there. The crowd certainly didn't. Here it comes. Right side. And I believe this is, they just get mugged. But that's the backup tight end now. We just told you that Zach Pianalto has gone. So Christian Wilson's in there, 33. More of an H-back type and just getting kind of pushed back and grab some cloth. Ball pushed back to the 10, second and 18. Short game. UNC has been able to score on drives of 10 and 12 plays and again with all those injuries you just don't expect them to be able to keep that up in this game when they get big play opportunities <laughs> there's Nigel Carr take advantage Mickey's gonna sit him down that was close to a taunting penalty there after the play and, uh, he was doing that earlier in the game too he was on punt return he was jarring off with some of the other players he's fired up in this game well but he also ought to look at the channel you better, you you better channel it that kind of fired up it cost you 15 if you get okay. the wrong official down there they showed some restraint. Third and 15. Yates takes a shot. Has a man deep. It's Boyd again. And not quite. Jamie Robinson able to get there. The ball stayed in the air a long time. Well, that's because it went 60 yards. He threw that football 60 yards in the air. And, and you know what, this is a, how does the secondary, Jesse, not stay deeper than the widest wide receiver? Craig, I was just going to say that. There's a reason this is the worst pass defense in Florida State history. On the same drive, they let two different guys get back behind them. Jamie Robinson, the senior safety, how does he let that happen? Unbelievable. And what'd you say, Chris, they give up 18.8? .8? For completion. <laughs> now we know why. So Shalik to point again. Reed, the freshman. Gets a block. Hurdles a man. He can make you miss. An exciting Greg Reed sets up the Knowles in plus territory. 20-yard return after a 50-yard punt as he tried to Reese. Chris, coming up on the IBM Halftime Report, we'll see who's on upset watch and what has to happen for some highly ranked teams to tumble. The Donald visits the doctor, and we'll have Mayday's Irish insights, and perhaps we'll also find out why Jesse Palmer awakens in the middle of the night screaming, more cowbell! It's coming up on the IBM Halftime Report. <laughs> Is that true? Oh, yes. man. No, no, I wanted less cowbell. Less we, cow. Yeah, we, well, it's brutal. <laughs> Are you yeah. going to see Dr. Lou? Oh, he's a Chuko Jenage. He's hurt on that punt return. He's the starting corner. The junior has been toasted a few times this season, shaken up. Again, injuries have really been a problem here. He, he gave it, delivered a big block, but hurt himself on the play. That's the block that helped Reed. No, it was actually just, it was a little bit after that. He just kind of got blindsided from behind. He was kind of just relaxing on the play, and a guy blew him up. You'll see here, he's just trailing coming down the field right here. Guy misses a tackle, and boom. Oh, he's just oh. trying to relax, and he kind of gets spun around. Oh. He's walking very slowly. The Knowles now, minute 56. They have two timeouts before halftime to try to cut into this 14-point lead. Absolutely. Offensive line's got to protect and give Ponder some time to throw the ball down the field. Thomas in the backfield. Four receivers out wide. They flip it far side. This is Burt Reed. Short game. There's a lot of time on the clock right now. Two timeouts. You can run your offense. You don't need big chunks. You can just methodically move this thing down the field. And you see right now them trying to get the football quickly out of Ponder's hands. W wouldn't you like to have the ability to run a draw or something? I mean, but when you're nine carries and minus eight yards on the night, you have no confidence that maybe hit them in the middle of the field with a draw. Tough sledding. Very few yards after the catch for... Fisher's receiving core. The seven completions totaling just 66 yards passing. 
And a short drop and a firing into traffic. That one's caught by Owens, and Rod Owens has a first down inside the 30. That's really the reason in this offensive scheme, with all these athletes, you can throw these quick slant routes, and they can catch these seven-yard completions and turn them into bigger plays. Uncharacteristic there, Bruce Carter, big upside. Usually a good tackler just goes in with his body and didn't wrap up the receiver. Pick up 15. Finder flips it to the man in motion. It's uh, Speedy Lewis Givens. Yeah, that's been coming back from a hamstring injury, but a guy they use in the running game has scored a couple touchdowns this season. You noticed on this drive so far, three passes, nothing vertical. Everything's been horizontal, trying to get those playmakers out in space. Now what are you saying? Hit the middle of the field here? Do they have somebody that can sneak in the middle? Two deep safeties. Finder looks outside again, fires and has a man wide open. Burt Reed, foot inbounds at the three. That's a good looking throw. He does such a good job anticipating throws. That's one thing I love about Christian Ponder's game. You saw that safety in the middle of the field, Jesse. He wasn't going to let anybody to the middle, was he? But he but he forgot that there's about 20 yards over there of green stuff between him and the sidelines. Didn't take long for Burt Reed to get there. And again, Christian Ponder, very good understanding of where to go with the football in the post snap. And a nice job by Reed there getting his foot down to ensure the completion. So in just four plays, taking just 24 seconds, the Noles have a first and goal. Keeps it. Flag is down, and so is the quarterback for a loss. Carter tracked him down at the 10. We'll check the marker. Looks like a false start. Yep. I'm not sure that might have been an illegal formation. Rod Owens is trying to wave guys up on the line of scrimmage there from his split end spot. Illegal formation, five players in the backfield on the offense. That penalty's declined. Second down. So again, penalties here on this football team. Down where you where you got it going. Mm. That was declined, but it brings up a second and ten. In the red zone, Knowles have been pretty good. 18 touchdowns and 27 trips. And boy, do they need a touchdown here. And the clock down to 12-11. They'll have to hurry. Play clock at four. Didn't get it off. Wow. With two timeouts in your pocket. You're going the wrong way. Delay of game. Offense number seven. What, Jesse, a quarterback's got to have better awareness, huh? It, it's not just the situation. You are in the red zone, but it's with the time left and two tight ends in your pocket. You can't move back, Craig. Uh, uh, but you know what I'm thinking here is the lack of a running game has Jimbo Fisher over there deliberating in his head. Okay, I have nothing that we can run on the ground. What do I do? My options are limited here. It took time for him over there and on the sideline. the clock line. is running inside of 50 seconds. Again, still two timeouts to spare. Second and goal from the 15. Under, under pressure, drops it off short for Burt Reed. Gets him about six yards back. Now it's down to 35 seconds, and, and time is an issue here. And this, this was a team, they were on the three-yard line just a moment ago. Yep. Well, here's, the thing about, down. here's the thing about that play right there. It, it's a double play move by the receiver, showing slant, wheeling out of it. It's a long developing play to get a couple of yards. You know what I mean? Not great use of time. See if Fisher has Ponder take a shot in the end zone. Or if they try to dump it off short. Again, Again, look at that play clock. If you're going to have the quarterback come to the sidelines and deliver the play and then run back out there, yeah, we're going to have to spend a timeout. Not electing to signal the play in. It's a kind of a one-on-one -on -one chat, Jesse, but it's taken a lot of time. It's a long way to run if you're a quarterback to go all the way to the sidelines, get the play, and they're not, they're not, they're also having conversations. It's not like it's a quick exchange of words. Give me the play. I'm running back. Well, and when we came into this game, the strength of Florida State was their offense. And they haven't matched. You know, North Carolina's defense has come out and hit them in the mustache and been strong from the get-go. Got a couple of sacks. Have a takeaway. 
The Knowles rushing game, negative 14. Defensive coordinator Everett Withers told us that he wants to have a nasty disposition on defense so that when teams see UNC on the schedule. That guy was nasty. Wow. He, he said PO'd. He wanted his defense to be PO'd on the side. And, and set the tone. And we talked to Robert Quinn, the defensive end. We talked to Marvin Austin, their defensive tackle. And they said, we want other teams to quit. We love when other teams hate us. You got to play that fast. Good. You got to play fast, though, that's going to happen. We've seen them play fast tonight. So a crucial third and goal. Heels show a three-man rush, and they do drop eight into coverage. They dump it off short. Catch made, but not a touchdown. Bruce Carter was right there to tackle Thomas. Fourth and goal from the three. Let's see what Babb decides to do. Lock continues to run. They'll run it down here and call time and kick a field goal or make an attempt at it. But how about Everett Withers? That defense, how smart they are. They backed up to the goal line, played umbrella, kept everything in front. Very smart. That, that speed is such an asset when you because you can play those types of coverages. You can play space, allow all these Florida State guys to run in front of you. But if you know you can go make a tackle mm -hmm. because of that speed and gang tackle, mm -hmm. that's what they can do, and that's why they can play this type of scheme. We saw the conversation reading lips there. Bowden and Fisher talking about whether to kick a field goal. It's interesting the decision making when you know the, the coach in waiting. He's got increasing authority and you know, calls the plays and you get the head coach who would make this decision in almost all the time. They, they have had a they've communicated though over the last year and a half though. Sure. You know they, they do talk about different decisions to be made but but this is one of those deals where it's the head coach's call if you go for three or, or, or try to get a touchdown and the kicker is on the field. Yeah they need points. Well and, and I they think needed seven points though. Yeah. That was a disaster for from being first and goal with the three to come away with three. You're right. They have not been dominant on offense so far in this half but this shows you they have confidence in this offense mm -hmm. in the second half they'll be able to generate points and get back in this game. You get the ball to start the second half and here's Hopkins from 18 yards and another flag. False start. Offense number 63. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. No big deal. It is the ninth penalty of the half. It'll maybe give Hopkins a better angle. In this oh, field that goal. was their strategy. I got you. I didn't say it's a strategy. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Why? Do you think this is a big deal I, compared to some of the other penalties? No, it's just time? sloppy, man. Nine penalties. I just, I don't want to argue about that. <laughs> we should a 26 yard attempt with a freshman. Knocks it through. So the Knowles cash in the good field position, but only for three as time expires. An impressive first half for the home team. They hold Florida State to an even 100 yards total offense. Cash in the fumble and lead it by 11 as Aaron is joined by Coach Bowden. I believe it's me. All right, Coach. Well, first of all, I have to ask you about the penalties. How do you address nine penalties with your team during halftime? I, I, that's the thing that's getting us beat. You know what? Right now, I mean, we. Make a what, about a six or 70 yard run down there and gets a uh, penalty? We didn't think it was, but uh, that was what was called. UNC's defense has shown a ton of speed in this game. What kind of adjustment do you make to counter that? Well, we just got to execute. If we could eliminate, if we eliminate the penalties, what do you think that score would be right now? It'd be pretty darn close, you know what? So we can just see what we got to do. Get on these kids, get kids about the penalties. Coach, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. All right, Chris. Aaron, the heels also had an 81-yard touchdown call back by a penalty of their own. 17-6, two teams looking for their first conference win. It's the heels up by 11 as we join Reese and ESPN studio for the IBM Halftime Report. Of the second half in Chapel Hill. ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Applebee's. The first ever Thursday night game here in North Carolina. We knew the story coming in was going to be the Tar Heels' fine defense against the Knowles' high-powered offense. Well, 
scored the first half for the team in navy blue as this Knowles attack held to six first downs, 100 total yards, negative 14 rushing yards. Ouch. Well, but you know what, North Carolina, they did it in the first quarter. You know, they had 14 points, 101 yards. The second quarter, three points and 36 yards. So Florida State kind of tightened up a little bit on them. FSU gets the ball to start the second half, and this is Lewis Gibbons at the 25 yard line, and yet another flag down. Nine penalties on Bowden's team for 70 yards in the first half. Boy, it can start to snowball. During the return, holding offense, number 13, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, it's a nice segue to our Home Depot coaching adjustments here. Penalties, mistakes, timing, lack of timing eliminated a very big play by Florida State. Jesse, they just got to settle down. They can't continue to make mistakes. Well, they can't lose their cool. They have to come out in the second half ready to go. They've gotten in their own way so far in this game. This UNC defense, to me, so far, is yards are tough to come by. They cannot get in their way. They have to buckle down, play smart football in the second half. Yeah, they've had a terrible start to the second half with a penalty that backs them up to the 13. Poor field position. The students are right behind Ponder in that end zone. Handed off to Lonnie Pryor, and true freshman breaks a tackle, short game. I think it's really important, Craig, in the second half, Florida State starts running the football. They've been balanced in terms of their play calling in the first half, but minus 14 rushing yards coming in, they got to find ways to get creases. It's hard to do that, though, when your offensive line's getting whipped by their front four, right? And you just got no chance of dominating and, and controlling the defensive line, so you have to depend on the quick, short, slipping passes and then yards after the catch. They've only gained, you know, 15 yards, offset by the big losses, but tough to be one-dimensional. Ponder flips it in the flat. This is Pryor going down low to make the catch, and short of the first down of the 20-yard line, Bruce Carter. Stop. Well, that's a way, as an offensive coordinator, when you're struggling to run the football conventionally, throw swing passes, quick screens. Those are extension of sweet plays, really. Can Fisher dial up? They haven't yet converted on third down tonight. They need three. Rush only four, and Thomas can't come up with it. Ponder got it out quickly. Off the hands of his running back and a three and out. And Jermaine Thomas has the ability to play wide receiver. You know, so he's got the hands. You, how do you blame Jimbo Fisher or Bobby Bowden for that? I mean, that's lack of execution on the players' part. At some point, players have to go out and make plays. you got to move these chains. You're supposed to be the best offense in the ACC. Punt by Powell. Searcy. And across midfield. And the Tar Heels, already up 11, will start in plus territory. Guys, it's time to talk NASCAR here. Sunday, and Chase hits the halfway point. Mark Martin and Gordon looking to close the gap. Three-time defending champion Jimmy Johnson is in Martinsville. Coverage begins 1 o'clock Sunday on ABC. Done about Goodyear. Johnson again. We talk about this every week, trying to do something that's just astounding in the history of all sports. You can win a fourth straight cup title. One down the road is Charlotte last week. Yates fires over the middle off the hands of his tight end. Aaron. Chris, you guys mentioned how fired up UNC head coach Butch Davis was in pregame warmups. Well, Coach Davis fired up coming out of the half, talking about how this team needs to act like it's zero to zero right now. He wants them to reestablish the intensity. Offensively, he said we need to just have a good balance here. Run game passing, and then guys, key for his defense, he said tackling, continue to do it, don't let down. Remember guys, they still look at this Florida State team like the Florida State team. Aaron, there's an end around and a little into the secondary. No, they may look at him like that, but they don't look like 
vintage Florida State. How about John Shoup, the offensive coordinator, finding unconventional and creative ways to get players involved in the running game? Okay, now let's just see if there's any any kind of defensive work here going on. Let's we're gonna freeze it for you when you get around here in just a moment. All right, look at the Florida State defense. Look at this. Nobody's outside. Where's containment, Jesse? You can't do that. That's terrible defense. You saw Nigel Bratton, the linebacker, struggling to run little down. He's had a big night. Catching passes. Scored a touchdown run. Yates in the flat to drone. Throws a dart. And running back dragged down by Kendall Smith after about five. You're seeing offensively right now John Shoup, how these end arounds are extensions building into new plays. Right there, Greg Little in motion again. They fake the handoff, they fake the around and spit it out in the flat. So you know what it's doing, guys? It's accentuating the weakness of a bad defense. That's oh. not discipline. They're when not covering the field. When you said that, though, Craig, you, you, all, you, all of a sudden you can run sideline to sideline. You can go exactly, wide on a Florida Chris. State defense. No doubt. When did that happen? Brother. You and I have watched this, this team for a long time. You played against them, Jesse. Florida State used to run you down when you left the tackle box. Drone cuts left, tries to get the corner. Shoved out at the 10. It was Jamie Robinson. So he's a couple of yards short for a third down and two. I think one thing that's very different about this Florida State defense as opposed to some of the greats in the past, no real dominant defensive lineman. You go back and look at guys like Peter Bulware, Bernard Wilson, Andre Wadsworth, Corey Simon, ballers <laughs> playing up front. That would, like you say, chase you down and do it by themselves. Then you used to need four guys to get pressure. Their best player, Dakota Watson, hasn't been able to go tonight with the, the groin problem. There are no Derek Brooks, Marvin Shade Tree Jones out there in the second level of defense either. They fake it to Houston. Yates keeps it. Gets a block and the quarterback into the end zone, standing up. <laughs> Nothing vintage about this Knowles team. You saw the shot of Andrews. Carolina reaching the end zone for their first possession of the second half as he did to open this game. Yates with a nice block from Ed Barham, the tight end. Barth makes it 24-6, and you see why it was so important to try to get seven and not three at the end of the half for Florida State. Now, when you watch this football team play, Florida State starting to walk that sideline. The offense better come up on an explosive play. They have the ability to do it, and now we'll get it done. the world famous Franklin Street one of the more famous main drags in a college town when the heels win the basketball national championship as they did last spring that place is shut down you get kids up in the trees it's also huge on Halloween night Palmer you might want to consider navigating your way to Chapel Hill knowing how much you enjoy that holiday hey, hey you're a New Yorker for that though <laughs> Halloween is, is a big deal in Manhattan, New York. There's no question about that. Yeah, there's Dakota Watson again. He hasn't been able to go. Their best defensive player. And I think with that groin problem, and they have missed him tonight. Givens. Ooh, big thud at the 23-yard line. Tinsley on the hit, or intelligent move brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Well, a nice intelligent move by John Shoup, the offensive coordinator, getting his big, strong receiver, Greg Little, involved early in the game. Jesse, a little trickeration on him. And I like it. They're getting him involved in the running game as well, and that makes sense because he played running back last year. This is a guy that's used to having the football in his hands, in space, playing physical, and they've been able to do that so far tonight. Greg Little, more yards in the Knowles tonight. Former basketball walk-on. Mm. Played uh, briefly a couple of times for Roy Williams basketball team. Nice visit with Roy at halftime up here. Ponder, near side. Again, nothing after the catch. Rod Owens picks up only about six in the quick tackle. Well, and, and Florida State knew that this was going to be the case. They had to get long drives. And it doesn't bother Jimbo Fisher because against Georgia Tech, they had 539 yards of total offense. The longest play in that game was only 33 yards. Yeah, and I like the tempo. Get out of the huddle. Let's go to the line of scrimmage. Let's change the pace here because this offense can get it done. Ponder has the ability as to his receivers. 
Get time as the heels rush four, lobs it downfield over the head of Easterling, and Searcy was in the neighborhood for the heels. This is what I'm talking about on UNC's defense. Guys with size that can run. They have two very big safeties playing back there, but you see how fast they can gobble up space when the ball's in the air. But I, I get the sense that ball was overthrown. Ponder's not been having a lot of overthrown balls, and I think he's feeling that blue jersey, that defensive line. He feels the presence of that fast defense. Yeah, Craig, and they're not just fast. They, they work well. Defense out there that has six three-year starters. Tremendous experience. They, they played when they were young pups a couple years ago. This wasn't a very good team, but they have grown up together. And they're pretty good in 09. Ponder on third down. He delivers short. Owens has it, and he has first down yardage as he fights to the 39. Real distinct number that jumps out at us here in the booth is in rushing yards here. North Carolina averaging 4.3 a carry. And you got Florida State still in the minus category. So it's a one-handed offense right now, and they've not been like that so much this season. Carolina's struggling with the running game throughout the season. You know, coming into tonight, they hadn't been very productive at all. They found ways with kind of unconventional running plays, though. This is Thomas. Quick burst, and Thomas fighting the midfield. There's one of the few productive runs for this offense tonight. And guys, th this is what I'm talking about. They, they just have to find ways to get this going. If that means lining up in the pistol formation or an unconventional set, you have to stay balanced. You need to find ways to get Thomas involved. Rodney Hudson, the guard. Nice job, Craig, clearing out there. Almost imperative for Florida State to, to answer the Carolina touchdown on this possession. Ponder in the flats, dumps it off. Thomas has some room. And he's showing a little energy here in the third quarter. Well, that pistol formation, what that's doing is that's really balancing up that North Carolina defense. And the linebackers are having to stand in there and be balanced. So they don't know if it's going left or right, and it really gives an advantage to Florida State. You're right, Craig. And I love on that play, Christian Ponder showing you his eye discipline. He knew he was going to throw that swing out out to the left, kept his eyes downfield as long as he could to freeze the defense before spitting it out to his playmaker. Chris Thompson, a true freshman, is now in the pistol behind the ponder. He's got it. And a short gain, very near a marker at the 40. Chris Thompson, number 23 on the run. See Florida, Florida State, State trying to run to the left side behind their best number offensive lineman, Bruce left guard, Rodney Hudson. He's a guy Hill. two years ago was a freshman All-American. Last year he was first team all ACC. Not a very big guy. He's only 285 pounds, but he is the quote unquote bell cow of that Florida State front line. Or is it cow bell? Which one is it? We were uh, talking about this yesterday, Craig. It depends on which side of the mouth that you're chewing your tobacco in the pasture. You might ask for a cow bell. Where's my cow with a bell? Or it could be the bell cow. You, you didn't exactly clear that up for me, well, Mr. I know. Farmhand. <laughs> <laughs> Most people jump out there and say, hey, where's my bell cow? But right. then I've been in the pasture with guys that say, hey, where's the cow with the bell? Where's my cow bell? The leader cow with the you bell. You dealt with that in Canada all the time, I know. We have, we have, we have, uh... This guy on a farm, yeah. But by the way, they're inches short here. <laughs> It'll be third down, so they'll give it to... We have Holstein cows in Canada, by the way. Those are some Good. of the best cattle out Good. there. Good. Well, that's not a cow, but... <laughs> you got a ram here with blue horns, and it's not a natural phenomenon, I promise. Third and short. This is Thompson, who goes just 173 pounds. And so Ponder's going to keep it and make the first down. Not much deception on that play. But you see them again running behind left guard Rodney Hudson. I, I think this is something we're going to see in the second half. They're just going to line up and say, look, this is our best lineman. We're running behind him. If we're going to have any success on the ground, we're going to earn it behind our best player up front. Tough to move out those Carolina After tackles. After the play, they're dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. Number 88, offense. Number 9, defense. Those penalties offset will be first down. So Relaford, who steps off there the tight end and Marvin Austin who will also come off for a play. No big impact. Let's check out what happened. See Relifer right there just trying to pull Marvin Austin off of his quarterback. Guess he didn't like that. First down. Marvin 
Fonda gets blitzed, gets rid of it, and a drop. Fortson had it. The heels brought pressure right up the middle with the freshman linebacker, Kevin Redding. At least Ponder broke the pocket, didn't think run. Fortunately, these receivers, now they've usually been dependable this season. You know, and, and there's an opportunity to get yards after the catch. You see Fortson working back towards the football. He catches that. He's already beaten the corner, Charles Brown. Speed back inside for big yards. Yeah, Fortson's a guy that could have made the catch that perhaps would have reshaped this season against Miami at the end of the game. It was a low throw by Ponder. Fortson couldn't come up with it. Many in the Knowles Nation believe that we have a different season that they gotten the home win to open it. Ponder right down the middle, complete, and taking a big hit at the 25-yard line as Reed held on. Deontay Williams was there. 15-yard gain. Jesse, in the second quarter, you, you mentioned that North Carolina had not been attacked in the middle of the field. And how about Reed going up, making the tough catch? He's a guy that's really emerging, and he knows he's going to get hit. He's got Deontay Williams just breathing down his neck. But good receivers understand, hey, you know what? I might as well make the catch anyway, because I'm about to get blown up. Reed just wants to find the end zone. He's been so close, but has yet to catch a touchdown pass this season. Ponder, pumping, goes to the end zone. Jump ball, risky throw. Is looking for Owens. And Williams again there to break it up. Here's the play against the Hurricanes to open the season. After the Canes have taken the lead, a seesaw game, third and goal to two. Low throw by Ponder. He took the blame. Thought he had a touchdown. Fortson couldn't come up with it. They reviewed it. In support of the call on the field of incomplete. And the Canes having a terrific year after that four point win. The Knowles have gone the other direction. It's the 11th play of this drive. Play action. Again, they dump it off short for Thomas. A couple of nice blocks, and he dives for about eight. Again, I'm, I'm really impressed because you're watching this defense. You, you, you and I are running around. Jordan Hemby, the backup corner down on the field. And it, it's amazing on that play. Three different UNC players are on the ground when he catches the football, and you see how fast they pop back up and swarm to the football. Mm. The athleticism is unbelievable. You know, it's crazy. You, you were mentioning earlier about that last play against Miami, and Bobby Bowden pointed out to us that, you know, in their four losses this year, they have all come down to the final two or three minutes of the game. It's not like Florida State is getting blown out this season. The reality is they are two and four, and people do look at losses, but he's been trying to go back and show his team these late game changing plays where they could have won games. Look at the losses though. USF and Georgia Tech at home. If you exclude the Jacksonville State one double A opponent. They've lost five in a row to one A opponents at Doak Campbell. And by the way no emails. I, I know it's FBS and FCS and that politically correct nonsense that they came up with it. One double A one A. I'm with you. I like to stick with that. I it, it lost it. five straight to one A opponents at home. That's a shock. And I, I, I think when people look at the schedule, they say, well, they're going to play Maryland at home and they're going to play NC State at home. And these are wins, but we've no. watched them play at home. It's, it's hey, different. This ACC conference is a tough conference. No great teams on any given Saturday. A team can rise up and win. We've seen that for sure. Still looking at Jordan Hemby, and we'll take a break. Very good news. Jordan Hemby able to walk to the sidelines. He launched himself at the ball carrier. Took a real blow to the head. Keep an eye right here. That's why fundamentally when they tell you as a defender always see what you're attacking. Keep your head up. When you duck your head that's when you get in trouble. Third and three. Knowles have converted on two third downs on this drive. Ponder keeps it. Breaks a tackle and Christian Ponder dives for a first and goal. They've done a good job containing his running, which has been a problem for some opponents, but that's a clutch conversion. Yeah, it was a nice call there by Jimbo Fisher. Empty set, linebackers dropped out, and a designed quarterback run. An interesting nugget, Florida State is 7-0 and when Christian Ponder has 29 net rushing yards in a game. <laughs> How about that? You spent too much time in your room studying I stats, my man. I'm one of those losers. I'll stay in and just <laughs> grind on this stuff. <laughs> 29 yards. That's the arbitrary cutoff. Huh? That's it. First and goal. Binder fires to the far sidelines. 
ball caught, but a very quick hit on Taiwan Easterling. Did a little dancing out there, and Searcy closed quickly, so they'll lose yardage. You know, this is that point now. We've seen Florida State down here a couple of times, and without a running game, just really handcuffs this football team. Got to catch the ball on rhythm and in time for execution again. Well, that's an opportunity for him to turn the football up. We talked about these swing passes and screens. That's an extension of the running game in Jimbo Fisher's offense. But the guy's got to execute it. Playmakers in space on the perimeter of the field. Catch it, look it in, tuck it, and get upfield. Empty backfield for Ponder. Five receivers. Heels rush four. Short throw, touchdown. Taiwan Easterling with his second touchdown of the season. And the Knolls chipping away. Crucial drive. Uh, and a crucial throw here. You see the arm strength of Ponder. Knows exactly where he's wanting to go with the football. And if that's not a dart, Jesse, it's not getting completed. Windows become very small and close quickly when you get down in the red zone. Ponder did a nice job dotting his guy. Yeah, for sure. That's the kind of matchup zone defense everybody's using in the red zone. And it takes a good and strong arm to find that gap. Easterling. The Knowles needed desperately to answer. They're back to an 11 point deficit. 6 12 to play in the third quarter. Finally, a touchdown from this offense that came in with such great numbers. And they're off for the North Carolina State Fair. Over in Raleigh, it's yellow, the lead over red. And they head around the clubhouse turn. Blue trailing the field. You guys want to pick up the call here? Who do you like, Greg? You know more about this than we do. Well, it seems like the, the pace car. Wire to wire. Yellow. The Mayo Jean. And, and the duck with the yellow thing around his neck was smart because he, he took the inside of the track away. So he had the advantage going on those turns. I'd just like to know what they were running for to get back to in that truck. Huh? Uh, Enterprise rent a car drive recap. A grinding, methodical drive by the Knowles there. Now the defense needs to stop. And this is Little, who's been so instrumental tonight as a runner and a receiver, makes a nice return. Now 14 plays, 76 yards, took 521, but the headline is no penalties. Oh, Knowles in the touchdown. Amazing what happens when you don't have penalties to deal with in a drive. The ball down the middle, Jesse, I thought that was important because it finally went to the middle of the field throwing the ball down the field. No question. They did it also in the red zone in that touchdown pass. There were two drops on that drive, but it just goes to show you, if you don't make mistakes in terms of penalties and move backwards, mm -hmm. good things can still happen. Mm -hmm. See what the heels can do. And the lead trimmed back to 11, which it was at halftime. They handle the end of the round. This is Johnny White, the little speedster. And he's got a nice gain again, a running game that struggled coming in, finding unconventional ways to pick up chunks. 16 that time. All right, you know, pay attention here. Let's watch this. Watch this linebacker coming inside. There's nobody. This can't happen. Getting stuck inside. Look at it, the wall. How many times have we watched that? In tonight? the days of old at Florida State defense, they would have played those great defensive ends in what's called wide nine techniques, where they put two hands in the ground. You never could break contain on those old defenses. Where was the containment? Someone once said. And they flip it. And once again, getting the corner is Drone and John Drone inside the 30. And here comes a flag. Very late in the play. Another big chunk of yardage, about 20, but a hold is going to bring it back. Heels have only had four penalties, but they did commit when they cost them a touchdown earlier. Holding. Offense number eight. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. I mean, forgive Mr. Little because he's had a big night, but he was guilty of the hold. Offensive coordinator John Shoup has figured something out. Wouldn't you agree, Craig? Well, it, it, it's, it, you know, inside lack of pursuit, lack of containment. Left side, Marcus White that time. The holding down the field. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can't pull him, he said. But listen, until Florida State proves that they can keep contain, John Shoup is going to keep down and plays up to hit the perimeter. And because the flag was downfield, it sets up a first and one. Very rare down in distance. 
Take a shot downfield. That's the mindset of Yates. I puts it short in traffic. Drone has a first down at the 41. Another flag on this play. Thought they might on first and one take a shot against this defense. Pass interference, defense number 12. The ball is placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Nigel Carr guilty of the penalty and we'll move the ball just a couple of yards to the 42. You know Bobby Bowden has been trying to find ways to motivate the ACC's worst defense in practice when they're doing well they'll come over to them and say hey guys listen get excited you're practicing against the best offense in the conference every day throughout the week you just got to transfer this over on, on game day. Well somebody like a Dakota Watson who's not playing that's their leader over there and he's not out there to, to influence the huddle and to motivate and remind First down, little play action. Yates rolling. Now it takes a shot downfield, but a bad decision threw it right into double coverage. And Jamie Robinson has his first interception of the season. A little greedy there. Absolutely. TJ Yates has really been disciplined to this point in the football game today and knows the score. You know, and down the field, the first thing I noticed, though, they didn't get beat deep, did they, Jesse? No, they didn't. They had two players on Greg Little. You're going to see right there Johnny White coming into your screen. He was running a wheel route down the sidelines, and that's where I thought T.J. Yates was going to try to throw that football. He had a chance to make a play just forcing that one. And the senior, Jamie Robinson, coming up with a big play Get four, take the football back. He's get it into the end zone, but they'll spot the ball at the three. The good news for UNC, that's basically like a punt. But, of course, you'd always rather get points. And you're giving it back to an offense that just went on a long drive and scored, so not sure they wanted to punt the football or throw it deep for the turnover. A couple of true freshmen flanking Weatherford, Chris Thompson and Lonnie Pryor. And again, that's the noisy end. The students right behind the Knowles quarterback. Time running out, didn't get it off. Again, for the second time tonight, just not awareness of the play clock, and they'll move a yard and a half closer to the goal line. Delay of game, offense number seven, half the distance, remains first down. Chris and Craig, just not a lot of sense of urgency no. tonight from this offense. Cohesiveness, a unit. They're not together. It's not on the same page. Coaching plays in, yeah, I don't know. 12 penalties, we know that. Oh. Ponder gets protection, takes a shot down the field, and has a man wide open. Rod Owens still on his feet. End zone ahead, touchdown, 98 yards. Now that's how you stay on the same page. <laughs> Touchdowns can't get much longer than that. And a defense that's given a very few big plays gives up a huge one there. You know, we'll start with the protection in the pocket. Ponder stands there. Defensive back slips, goes down, and follow through on the execution. It was a double move, a curl and go, just enough to stymie Charles Brown. He lost his balance. Great job keeping the balance by Rod Owens. I can't remember the last time I've seen a 98-yard touchdown pass. It might have been when Chris Wanky hit Snoop Menace yep. back against Clemson in the late 90s. Look at TJ Yates. Okay, so what does the turnover do, do to you, right? We'll go for two. The margin is five. Finder wanting to keep it. Tried to lower the shoulder. He'll be spotted uh, in the end zone. They gave him the two-point conversion. He got physical. There's a flag down. Ponder just challenging Deontay Williams. Holding offense number 60. 10 yards. Ouch. Repeat the try. It's the center, Ryan McMahon. So instead of being a three point game, the decision of whether you kick the point to cut it to four or go for it from the 13 now. For me, I look at it, I say my offense has momentum right now. Old Moe's jumped on my bench. Go ahead and get the points. Don't chase them at this point. And how about the effort, though, by Ponder? If he doesn't give that effort to get in there, it, it, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a statement on that play, the physical. But look at this. 90-yard touchdown pass. There it is. Ties the longest ever with Chris Wanky to Snoop Banks. And just like that, Florida State now back in this game. How does their defense respond? 
See, Butch is saying challenge yeah, the deal. I, I, I don't think he's convinced Ponder got in the end zone there. Sorry, Ponder. <laughs> if Ponder didn't get in there, then it, you know they declined the penalty and there's it's over. I thought he was going to be stopped short, but then he he lowered the shoulder and really challenged the safety Williams and see if the knee was down. A lot of toughness from Christian Ponder here. We, we saw him injured earlier in the game. He had that sore left elbow. Just a lot of will, power. Trying to drive himself in. You'll see it right here. Yeah, design play, quarterback draw. Did his knee hit the ground? He, he landed on top of Williams and then lunged for the goal line. Hard to tell. I think you're looking here for the right knee. Hard to tell right there. David Spurlock kind of blocking. Inclusive footy video yeah. evidence. Yeah. I didn't see anything conclusive there. And the side judge came running in and signaled a touchdown or a successful two point try, I should say. So he's ruled down. Heels can decline the penalty and it'll it stick at 24 19. Won't have an opportunity to kick the PAT. Florida State though has looked so good these last two drives now on offense and finally the defense getting a turnover allowing them the football back to make a big play. After further review the ruling on the field stands the holding foul is enforced we will run the try. It's a great effort by Ponder. It, it may have earned his team one point instead of two. If the PAT is successful, then he stopped short and he's sitting in the 24-19 game. So here's the freshman Hopkins. Boots the PAT not from the center of the field, but off to the left side. And the longest play in Keenan Stadium history has brought Florida State within four. This week, Saturday Night Football, most of the nation will see number three Texas visiting the Missouri Tigers. Some of you on the West Coast will see the Babers take it on the Trojans in the Coliseum. Visited by Southwest Airlines, 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 on the West Coast. Now, the undefeateds in college football were down to just seven of them. There's still a couple of weekends of games in October. Of course, the Gators and the Tide, many believe in a collision course in Atlanta. Iowa just keeps doing it, but a test at Michigan State this weekend. How about TCU getting an opportunity now? Everyone's talking about Boise State right now, number four in the BCS rankings. TCU's a top 10 team. They're going to play a ranked opponent, BYU. They get Utah later in the season. Very good chance they could be ranked when they play them. They're going to have an opportunity to be that BCS buster as well, I think. Well, I think they, they need Boise State to lose if the pollsters continue to be enamored with the Broncos. I don't see that happening. You're saying that UTEP went last night thumping the Tulsa team that, that gave Boise State a, a tough game last week. UTEP thumped Houston, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. in terms of Boise State, a lot of eyes right now on Oregon. Yep. Find out how Oregon ends this season up. Remember, that's the marquee win for Boise State this season. And TCU with a couple of road wins against ACC teams. They went to Clemson and won a tight one. Beat Virginia convincingly to open the season. So they'd, they'd like the Tigers of Clemson and Cavaliers to keep winning. Pick taken on the fly and Bobby Rome, the fullback, able to bring it out across the 30-yard line. That's where the heels will take over. Now flag, couple of them after the play. It's getting chippy out there. Hunter Fur, the running back in ball. play, personal foul, number 40 of the receiving team, 15 yard penalty. First down. He's getting contagious. That's Butch stomping around over there. The sixth penalty will move the ball back 15 yards. Yeah, this is just a late bonehead play here. No. And, and you, you know what? This, this whole game has turned, obviously. Christian Ponder now, 21 of 28, two touchdowns. You got the hot player on their side over there. You got you to be smart as a football team. Christian <laughs> Ponder's had a couple drops as well in this game. He's playing lights out, but you're right. Right now, momentum is shifting. Butch yeah. Davis's team has to calm down. He had 14 points, Jesse, in the last minute and a half. Wow. So a four-point game is Yates. The drone behind him. Take over. Runs out of time and he'll be dropped. Kendall Smith, middle linebacker on the sack. As we check back with Reese. 
Chris, Sports Center right now, Raiders coach Tom Cable will not face charges after being investigated over allegations that he had assaulted one of his assistants been hanging over the team for a couple of months. Sports Center after the game, stay current with ESPN News and an update on the ALCS Game 5. Yankees got six after falling behind 4-0. A three-run double from Mark Teixeira, who has three hits. Angels trying to stay in the series at 6-5. Yes, thanks. Brown takes a handoff on second and long and fights for a few. What do you say we go to a World Series game, Jesse? The stadium there. You up, you up for that? We should both do that. New York City is a great place when the Yankees are in the postseason, aren't they? A place is, and that is a great city. Such a it's great a great place spot. anyway. But Yeah, but when the Yankees, something special about when the Yankees make the postseason, everybody dials in. We gotta go try to hit don't, 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 don't dial in right now. They're, they're going to make the World Series. <laughs> no one's in the back. You don't have to dial in right now. Let's watch the football hey, game, right? Here. right. Hey, you mind if I come up with you guys and go to the game? Third and 11. Yeah, come on. Right. Third and 11 here. Will the Seminoles get the ball right back? Short completion. Bar in the tight end, but he doesn't get enough. All of a sudden, little energy. Nick Moody tracking down the tight end, and here comes a punt. A lot of energy. You saw defenders finally starting to attack receivers. They contained. They kept pondering. Uh, they kept Gates back in the backfield. Didn't let him outside. FSU defensively right now is playing faster. They've been motivated. They got a big interception that led to a big touchdown. They're feeling it right now. Mm. Rally to the football, what these coaches always say. Huh? Yeah. So there's Shalik and the dangerous Greg Reed back deep. Driving kick, but low enough that Reed will have a play. Drag down. Good coverage. Reed so dangerous if he can make the first couple men miss, but they net 50 yards on that punt. LT exhorting that defense, getting into it. He was kind of playing it cool early. Now he's through the fire. Just it's the, great to have him back there, though. Now, you know, you, you were mentioning he hadn't yeah. been back in a long time. I think that's great. It's great for LT. Come back to your home. Be a part of it. These fans love him here. And he pulled out all the stops tonight with LT and Julius Peppers on the sidelines. But this defense, which just got toasted for a 98-yard touchdown pass, now protecting just a four-point lead. Ponder flips it out. Reed picks up about eight. Aaron, what do you have? Well, I've got Bruce Carter, linebacker, of course, for UNC. He just put his helmet back on, but, guys, he's got tears in his eyes. He had his right ankle taped up, and he's just very, very frustrated. I don't know if the training staff is going to let him come back in, but he was pleading his case to the trainers. We'll have to see. Guys, also, Jordan Hemby, we saw him with the, uh, the injury there on the field. They took him back to the locker room. He is done for the game. Aaron, thanks. Yeah, the blow of the head. Good thing to be cautious. And Carter, if he can't return, that's a loss. He's a real playmaker and a leader there. They flip it out. Easterling, as flags fly, still on his feet, takes a big shot at the 41. Evan Reddick, the freshman linebacker, clocked him. And we'll check the marker. Holding offense number 80. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Second down. Did that LT get into it down there? Did we hear his uh, voice? I think you're, you're hearing <laughs> the competitive nature of one of the great defenders to ever play football, period. <laughs> but here's another play. It's another quick swing pass out to Taiwan Easterling. Yeah. Extension of the running game. An obvious hold there. When a receiver out wide like that stops using their legs, they have to grab the hold. you got to keep on them. Stay on them like a bee on honey. Again, a little short inside screen. It's Easterling. Shakes one tackle, but grabs only three before E.J. Wilson grabs him. Aaron? Chris, you were right. That was Lawrence Taylor pleading his case to the officials. It was holding. And interesting enough, we asked if he could put the headset on and talk to you guys, and he said, my throat hurts. So maybe it's uh, I, heard, I heard him loud and clear, Aaron. Aaron, I heard him loud and clear that time. He's able to talk. He's talking okay. <laughs> we understand. He's intense, though. He's... Want to enjoy every second of this. Third down and seven, as LT says. Yeah. 
Good protection and a strike across the middle for a first down to Rod Owens. Heels really haven't gotten to Potter that much, and they're not blitzing very much. Well, they're good for Watch Chris right here on this replay. Watch how they do. You're going to see the crossing and all the stunt work that's going on in the mid middle of the field. How about clear? And, they, and, and they're picking them up. It's a good job of that Florida State offensive line opening up the middle, Jesse. That's a nice job by Christian Ponder, remaining patient, stepping up in the pocket a little bit, anticipating the throw to the open area of the field. That series that featured a holding penalty. That was a big conversion. And Owens now, eight catches for 179. The throw downfield again, and another catch by Owens. He's starting to really kill this Carolina defense. Owens inside the 40, 20 more yards. The one thing that I've noticed here, that, that snap, at, with the time left on the clock, the urgency, it used to be. Remember that end of the second quarter, Jesse? They were getting down to 2-1, delay a game. Now it's 15, 16 seconds. They're hurrying the up the tempo. You're absolutely right. And Christian Ponder, had it not been for a couple of drops, guys, he might almost be perfect on the night. Could be the final play of the third quarter. Thompson breaks free, and the freshman fights for another big game. Chris Thompson, number 23 on the run. Quinton Copel's tackled him, but all of a sudden, Quentin this Copel Carolina defense reeling a bit. That 98-yard touchdown pass turning things around. Knowles on the march down four as we head to the fourth quarter. Chapel Hill, the first ever Thursday night game here. These folks were enjoying themselves, but now tension in Keenan Stadium as the Knowles down by only four after a monster third quarter. They had 236 total offense in the third after just 100 in the first half. They hand it off to Thompson. The first down as he muscles to the 21-yard line. And Ponder is at nine in a row, Jesse. He's up to 318. He's about 80% in this football game. And again, he's had some drops. If you go back to his last five games, he's completing 70% of his passes. He's been very efficient this year. You know what we're seeing here now is a little running game. They were in the minus yardage in the first half. We talked about how they had to get that going. Yep. This pistol formation is giving UNC a lot of trouble. Yes. Gotta get a few yards, but it's been fine over the passing game. Would you say yeah, it's turned I mean, this it's around? A little bit of a balance. Mm -hmm. They hand it off again. Tries to bounce it, but Thompson's drops. <laughs> okay. The loss is Reddick stopped him. Point taken, Fowler. <laughs> All right, <laughs> don't, get, don't get away from what I, got I you would, in the I game. I would keep throwing the ball. I'm <laughs> yeah, back All right, I'm, I'm back on the bus with you. <laughs> no, I think I think one thing we've seen so far this last little while, this UNC defense, a little uncharacteristic, big plays they're giving up, yeah. missed tackles, a little rattled, I think. Yeah, I mean things that they they preach, the things they do such a good job in week in week out, falling apart a little bit right now. I, I, I you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see Everett Withers change up that four-man rush and go with five or six. He's got to disrupt Ponder some way. There's Owens who's been the big receiver in this game who goes in motion. Ponder throws back the other direction. And this is Rella for the tight end. Able to break a tackle, but he's spun down after a loss. To try to draw the attention to Owens and come back the other way. Watching that play live, Craig, I thought for sure that was going to be a big gainer. I mean, I thought for sure this thing was going to gash UNC. Watch Quan start at number 52, how fast he gets up and makes this play. Yeah, you just couldn't quite get the guard out there in time to make the block. Rodney Hudson and LT, it's coming. He sees it. He knows it. I think he wants to jump out there. He wants to become the 11th defender. <laughs> They'd love it if he could put some pads on, get Julius Pepper put some pads on. They could use those two guys right now. Well, okay, then Florida State gets to go get a couple. Who do they have over there? Huh? Everett Brown's here. So. Yeah, well, that helps. Ponder on third down, fires over the middle. A low throw is complete. Not first down yardage. Burt Reed went down low. Heels thought the ball hit the ground. Sure they'll take a look at this. What a difference a half makes when you slow down making the, the, the penalties and the mistakes and your receivers step up making tough catches. Did he get it? Looks like he has it there. Under the ball. 
That looked good. Christie yeah. did 17, though, got only 11. So here comes Hopkins. And had they made that two point conversion, which again, the penalty ruined, this would be for a tie. As it is, Hopkins trying to cut it to a one point game. Five on the play clock. Better hurry here. Nope. No awareness, and now it's going to be a 40 yard field goal. Delay of game. Offense. You can call a timeout from the sidelines, can't you? If somebody notices the clock, you can you can call timeout over there. It, it just has to be a sense of urgency on the field. I mean, that's the third or fourth delay of game penalty Florida State has had. Now, I know it's loud. Ah. It, it, it's not Death Valley at LSU, though. I mean, no. get up, call the play, let's go. Let's see if it costs Hopkins this from 40 yards. He's been accurate tonight. And he is again. So the heels inching closer. We're down 18. Now it's a one point game. <laughs> the Banana Boys are a little dejected there. They were celebrating when the lead was 18. It's now a single point. What do you think? What is it, 40 grand a year to go to school here? And parents of. Tar Heels, money well spent. It's a festive <laughs> night here. Fall break in, in full swing, right? No classes tomorrow. Halloween on the horizon. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, there's some tension here now. Both teams so hungry to get their first ACC win. Carolina breathing easy a little while ago. Now try to protect the one-point lead as Little tries to give him some field position. And guess what? A flag is down on the return. Little stops short of the 15. A little bit contagious. Uh, Knowles, 15 penalties. Carolina's had six. This looks like number seven, and they've been costly as well. During the return, holding number 80 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Barham, the tight end. Now, you know, what do you do if you're John Shoup, who was calling some stuff that was tricky, catching the Knowles off guard early? But now protecting a lead to just one point, you got bad field position. Well, bad field position in the second half to trend North Carolina's offense 84 yards. You know, you got Florida State to put up 250 in this half. Craig, what has UNC done so well so far in this game? They've broken contain and gotten to the edge. With trickeration too, right? With trick plays. Keep getting those receivers in motion. They hand it. Johnny White. And that time the wide run doesn't produce much as we check back with Reese. Chris, every week we honor the ESPN AT&T All-America Player of the Week. This week it is Alabama running back Mark Ingram who lit up South Carolina for 246 yards and a touchdown in the Crimson Tide's 20-6 win. You can get in on the vote every week. Just text vote to 345-345 on your wireless phone. Not only do you vote for the ESPN AT&T All-America Player of the Week, but well, you could win a trip to the national championship game. Grace thanks. Love the way that Ingram runs. Will be challenged by that Kiffin Rocky Top defense on Saturday. As Drone runs left and gets the edge. Good call, guys. The wide run that time works, and they move the chains and get out from their shadow of the goalpost. There's no reason for you to think that it won't work because it has worked so well tonight. One play, make a play. You know, you talk about making a play, Jesse. At some point, Florida State's trying though. I mean, their defense is moving a lot faster. They, they are, you know, and, and they've been re-energized here over the past couple of drives. But this is what John Shoup, the offensive coordinator at UNC, needs to do: dial these type plays up, keep the clock going, earn these tough yards. Knowles on a 17-point run in the second half. Nigel Bradham has had at times a tough night with the tackle for loss. You know, Chris, you alluded to it a moment ago, but Bobby Bowden in this fourth quarter, his team's lost a lot of games late. If they could somehow come back and pull this off, Jesse, I'm telling you, it takes a lot of pressure off Bobby Bowden. No question it does. And he's been showing them video. He's gone back and taken them through each of the four losses and walked them through the end of games. Here's a great opportunity. Fourth quarter. 
Go make some plays. Second and 11. They give it to Little. And around. He cuts it back inside. Spins and fights. Up near first down yardage at the 36. And the junior has been the best weapon for the heels. And again, it's a guy that played running back last year. You can just see how comfortable he is, especially playing inside. You, you don't often see this, do you, Craig? Guy coming in motion and then cutting it up inside. It's like that midline option play we see from Georgia Tech. They hand it to Jeremy Boyd, and he busts a big run into Florida State territory. So some up-tempo from Shoup. And the heels, they rip off 20 more. Well, Shoup changed his design here in the fourth quarter. You know, they've gone and they've started doing a little reversing, and they moved the ball around. Florida State's defensive line's moving up front and not maintaining a responsibility. And they haven't had a lot of success throwing the football here very recently. And you wonder if John Shoup has just said, okay, look, you know what? We're going to try to beat them up up front, just keep this thing on the ground. Or lull them to sleep. And again, a Florida State defense being beaten up with the running game. Again, they were 93rd against the run coming in. This is Drone. Big haul. Drone into the secondary. Inside the 20. A huge gash in that Knowles defense before Jamie Robinson runs him out. A 26-yard game. This is a trend that has not stopped. You're going to have to get linebackers out here to get there. Nobody's pursuing. It's unbelievable. Nice job by the tight end, Ed Barham, getting up to the second level and getting a seal block on that linebacker. Isn't it something, though, Jesse, when you see linebackers not filling and spilling and getting out there? Mm. So the Knowles will take a timeout on defense to regroup. 9-11 in this fourth quarter. One-point game. More fun of the state fair, the pot-bellied pig race. You, you realize, Craig, that the, the last place pig, that's what Palmer had for dinner last night. Oh, don't <laughs> say that. Wasn't that don't pork, say pork shank? No, that it, was, it was Coca-Cola braised shank of, of, of pork. It was good. First down for the heels. After the timeout, and drawn again. Starts wide, cuts it back. Nice gain of about five. You guys realize that Carolina has 16 running plays of 15 plus in this game. They had two against 1A competition this season coming in. It talks about that Florida State defense, doesn't it? I mean, the edge has been there all night. You got to go up tempo. Quick hand up, up the middle. That time they drag drone down after a short game. Kendall Smith on the stop. It'll set up third down. Chris, you were looking back at your notes from John Shoup, and he had some great one-liners about if it's not broken, don't fix it. And yeah, he sees he run the same play until, you know, the average per carry starts going down. In other words, don't change a winning hand. But they need five on this third down. Do you throw it? They haven't thrown a pass on this drive yet. We're both shaking our heads. No, no, I'd, I'd leave it on the ground. Would you? Yeah. And then the shotgun. I'll go outside. And they hand it off. Drone spins, cuts, and dives. But he doesn't have enough. Gets inside the 10. Fourth and short. Would be a chip shot. And that's what they'll do. Here comes a field goal try. I think that's the play. You make this thing. You make this thing 27-23. So it's so Florida State needs more than a field goal to come back and tie. Hey, hey, but again, the, the, the weakness of this team has been Florida State's defense. If they can hold them to three, they give it back to the strength of their football team and give them a chance to go down and score six. Barth, one of one tonight. This from 26 yards. And it's perfect. So the heels chew a bit of clock, break the 17-0 run, but Ponder and the Knowles will go back to work down only four. Roy Williams in the house, of course. Team coming off the national championship. Should be ranked somewhere in the preseason top ten. At halftime, he wants the heels to win, but also felt a lot of compassion, sympathy for Bobby Bowden and what the legend has gone through. Makes a parallel to Dean Smith. Yeah, no question. I don't think there's any fan of Florida State who's, who doesn't love Bobby Bowden. I don't know if there's very many fans aside from Florida State right. that don't love Bobby Bowden. Even the Gator fans? No, I mean, Bobby Bowden is one of the great men and great people in all of college football. 
It's a short kickoff. Givens. Shows his explosive speed and gets out near the 40. Speaking of the mighty Gators, they're headed off to Starkville. Cowbell's ringing. And so Florida tries to get the offense going against the, the Mississippi State. Mississippi State's been better on the road than they have been at home, right? Now they came so, close to beating LSU at home there. Yeah, they really should, should have, have beaten them. Should have beaten them. Now Florida right now has yet to prove, in my mind, that they can throw the football to win games. At some point down the stretch, Florida's going to have to throw to win. Florida State's going to have to throw to win this game tonight. Monder takes over. They fake it to Thompson. Throw down the middle. Has a man wide open. Fortson inside the 30. What a way to start that drive. And, and it's really the linebacker level. Once they see the ball going down the middle, Jesse, they have a turn to get back. There's that big hole in the middle of this defense and just coming inside. Nice job of Fortson. It's a nice play call by Jimbo Fisher on that stack release that allowed Fortson clear access, and he just used that speed to get down the middle of the field. Nice touch on the throw also. Ponder approaching 400 yards. He's hit 12 in a row, a flag before the play as the heels jumped into the neutral zone, and <laughs> still that Florida State offensive line down in their stance. What, what is they got him again. <laughs> That's just funny looking. <laughs> The, 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 <laughs> the other six guys are running around. The discipline is amazing. And Christian Ponder, after the play, runs right over, taps them all in the head. What goes, is that, like the green button? Good job, guys. Yeah, go, go you now. You can go now. You freeze, can release unfreeze. them. Simon says it's okay to go. <laughs> That's right. Hey, five big old dogs sit Man. and stay. But you know what? Think about it. An <laughs> offensive lineman doesn't need much to give him a chance to sit there and take a break, right? <laughs> Good point. Taking an official's timeout here. There's another look. Defensive end jumps offside. That triggers the offensive line to just freeze. They don't even move. And that's just a simple rollout to the left. He's got a hitch route on the outside. It's a five-yard stop. Easy completion. What, what, what point are they trying to prove, though, by staying there? Hey, I'm telling you, they're taking a break. Hey, you come on back and let me know when it's over. But you don't have to stay down like that. <laughs> it's, it's the principal, Fowler. Okay. It's what Rick Trick is teaching these guys to do. Discipline, right? That's Discipline? right. He was a Marine. <laughs> Do what he says. I understand. He came from West Virginia, known as a, a tough and very good offensive line coach. Offsides on the defense is declined. Brings up second down. We'll take the gain on the play instead of the penalty. What we are watching here, North Carolina's defense. Look, they're sitting still. They're not aggressive. They're not flying around and playing that SEC speed that you mentioned earlier in this football game. You know, I think the three of us were curious to see how they do against the first real, real good passing offense they face. In the pass rush, they've tried to get away with rushing four. Haven't really gotten it ponder that much. Only a couple of sacks. He sneaks it ahead for the first down. I think if you told Jimbo Fisher you're going to give up, you know, two sacks for 10 yards, he'd have taken that in a heartbeat against this defense. No question about it. And if he'd have heard that he was going to be 30 of 37 from his quarterback in a football game with a few drops. It should have been better. But Jimbo Fisher raves about this guy, Christian Ponder. You have to understand, every play Christian Ponder comes to the line, he's given two or three possibilities. He checks this football team into the best play each and every snap. Two true freshmen flanking Ponder in the backfield. Pump fake. Fires to a wide open man and a touchdown. Uh oh, Bo Relliford, that tight end, left alone. And the Knowles take the lead. Bo Relliford, it looks like he ran a wheel route. That wasn't even a wheel route. It was so late developing Ponder stepping up in the pocket that Relliford turned it into a wheel route. You see the eye discipline again and the pump fake, making everybody squeeze to the middle of the field, allowing this tight end wide open access. Somebody busted an assignment and a huge comeback from Florida State. From 18 points down, at one point in this second half, Florida State has the lead with 6.20 to play. You know, some... to, you know he's filling in Kasparowski, the, the fine tight end is out injured. And Relliford not known as that, that productive receiver. They left them alone there. But you know what? We talked about this. At some point, players have to make plays on the field. Coaches can only do so much. 
and the players have to take over, and they've done that in the second. The half. offense has responded. The defense has also responded here in the fourth quarter as well. All of a sudden, this team's showing a little more swagger on the road, trying to get their first conference win. Christian Ponder now, he's the first quarterback the three straight 300-yard games since Chris Ricks did it back in 2001. Well, for a, a, a talented guy, they think he's got a big future. He was an MVP of the state basketball tournament down there in Florida. A guy that has a 36-inch vertical, so he's, he's an athlete to watch in the future for Bowden. What would it mean to come off the canvas after an embarrassing first half and win a road game? Snap that skid. They're still alive in the Atlantic Division of the ACC. For all the powers on the other side of things, they, they can win out and, and, and somehow win this division. I mean, they got to go to Clemson, but this comeback tonight would be huge. Deep kick and some confusion. They hand it off to Johnny White. And White weaving his way out near the 30. Tail of two halves. Christian Pinder was hammered a bit pressured in the first half the fumble that set up a touchdown but boy, he turned it on after halftime you noticed right there what you saw was the defensive line in his face in that first half that defensive line's not been in its face the second half no they've moved the pocket a little bit more he showed great patience throwing the football i think the biggest difference in the first half a lot of throws horizontally in the second half they've now started pushing the football downfield craig getting to that middle area of the field that we were talking was so wide open early a 98 yarder to Owens is what turned this game around. Is it his last 14? So now the heels try to get the running game going with Johnny White, and White finds a crease. And the offenses have taken control here. The heels with the running game, the Knowles throwing the ball. <clears throat> Not sure what you might want to think about, Mickey Andrews, but maybe just put somebody out there and just tell them make sure it stays inside. Florida State's defense has lost containment time and time again tonight against the run. 22 more yards for White. Receivers have made some big runs tonight to complement the 100-yard game from Drone. This is Drone. About four tough yards. You know, Jesse, though, that, that Mickey Andrews, is tr he's told those guys you got to contain. No, he's trying. Mickey Andrews will go down as one of the greatest defensive coordinators ever in college football. This is frustrating for him. He told us it used to be fun back in the 90s, letting four guys go out, rush the passer, and just sit back and enjoy how dominant they could be. It's not like that anymore. Not, not by a long shot. Maybe last team with the ball wins. Carolina, got to be patient. Blake Pock running down. They fake it to Drone, and Yates takes a shot into traffic and almost picked off. There were two Knowles converging. It was Robinson and Bradham. Yates took a risk. That's maybe why we haven't seen so many pass plays now here called the last few series. The last thing you can do if your TJ Yates has turned this over. They've been running these underneath crossing routes all day, Craig, but Florida State now hanging on. Uh, you see Brad, Bradham and that secondary starting to figure out the crossing routes, the little rubs. Did Bradham tip the ball out of Robinson's hands? He so might have like, gotten a hand on that, like. disrupting the teammates' attempt at an interception. Third and seven. Yates pressure delivers, but nothing doing. After the catch, Little stopped immediately. It'll be fourth down. Now, here's the question. Do you go for it if you're Butch Davis, considering what Florida State has been doing to you now recently on offense? He's going to punt it. He's going to punt. With 4.40 to go in the game, though, I think you do. You punt it down there, and you got to depend on your great defense. Mm -hmm. Lars Taylor needs to go over and give them all a high five while I'm running on that football field. Crowd always wants the coach to go for it. There were some boos there. UNC was running the football so well on that drive. They would have loved to have run it right down the field, scored late, not get Florida State the football back, but... Here's Shallon. High kick. Too long. And now the crowd boos again the decision. They don't net that much. No one will take over at the 20. Again, the chase. NASCAR halfway point. 
Coming down to it here as Jimmy Johnson tries to close in on a fourth straight cup title there in Martinsville on Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. Jimmy Johnson and Cale Yarbrough, the only two drivers in NASCAR history ever to win three consecutive titles. It's unbelievable. What was the, the car number of Cale Yarbrough? Ten? <laughs> Ten? Did that back in your day, did you? Did you? I, 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 I followed Kelly Yarbrough, absolutely. <laughs> your day, your day was my day too, homeboy. <laughs> Under a first down throw as they protect the lead, and they flip it out to Burt Reed. Knowles close it down quickly. Burt Reed, very heads up play right there, staying in bounds. Jimbo Fisher yelling about something over there. Right? Telling him on point where he's supposed to be on, on marking that ball. But an interesting call, too. You know, to take a chance at clock stopping with an incompleted pass. Rod Owens, the senior out of Jacksonville. You know, solid, versatile receiver. He made the monster play. He's been the main weapon. Catching the underneath stuff, yards after the catch. Holding on in traffic. Big 98 yarder that, that turned it around. Well, we had talked about it coming into the game. They had five different receivers with at least 15 catches. You never know week in, week out, which guy is going to be the dominant receiver. Today, it was Rod Owens, both short and long. No bigger play than this one right here. He needs one more yard for a 200 yard game. And he did it against the defense that was rated number one against the pass coming in. It's easy they won't, to get be, the, they won't be at the top of the rankings after this game. Uh, well, with a 98 yarder, it's easy to get to 200. A lot easier. Nothing looked easy for a while, but some good adjustments and some great quarterbacking by Ponder in the second half. Bonk yeah. four minutes, second and six. There you go. That's the guy's got to step up. Somebody on the D line. Rush three, drop eight, completion, and fighting for first down yardage is Burt Reed. He's be just a bit short. Interesting here. They're not going to run the ball and sit in the clock. Not much trust for this defense. Uh, Fisher wants to be aggressive with the ball. We just talked about Burt Reed doing a good job staying in bounds. <laughs> now, why on that play would you go out of bounds and stop the clock? You have the lead. Stop it momentarily. Don't wind it now. It's third and very short. Whole stadium expecting a quarterback sneak here. And they hit Ponder. I don't think so. Juan Sturdivant. It was a predictable call. They weren't going to hand it to the slight Thompson. Where will they spot it? Right. Needs to get right into the 30 yard line, right on the 30. I, I, I see a spot short of that. Mm -hmm. Christian Ponder trying to run the sneak again behind his best offensive line and left guard Rodney Hudson. UNC though had a great surge coming off that football. Well, and they had a great discipline surge. Well, that's, a, that's a generous spot, yeah. I think. Yeah. Which Davis didn't love it, but it is a first down. Yeah. You know what? You've got the dime and the pinch on the inside by your two defensive tackles, and then you got the discipline on the outside. Oh. The ball. Oh, he's yeah. stuck it out there. It he did. Yeah. Nice job. Risky, but Very nice. nice. Yes. Risky because it's not like the play stops when you not like the goal line, right? Yeah. The ball's not dead when you reach it across the plane. Oh, the that's first right. Down. Ball security is at a premium. You're going to watch Florida State now offensively milk this play clock as much as they can without getting delay of game penalties like they have. You, you, you saw Butch Davis there, and we talked about it early in the first quarter. His intensity in pregame, he understood the importance of this football game, the opportunity. He understands how tough it could be to blow an 18 point lead and lose it. And first down, we'll hand it. And there's a loss. See if the heels spend their time out. They do. Davis has one more to work with. Three minutes exactly to go. Now here's the thing. I mean, UNC has not been very dominant tonight throwing the football on offense. If, in fact, they are able to get this football back, you imagine without any timeouts left, they're going to be in a passing mode in two-minute offense. Do they have the juice and the playmakers yeah. to get it done? Absolutely they do. Absolutely they do. But you know what? Maybe that's what they need because in the second half, they have fallen apart offensively. It's been all Florida State, so maybe the sense of urgency 
Gets T.J. Yates up and I, going. I Jesse makes a good point. They got you 86 passing yards all night. Well, you got a bunch of freshmen out there playing receiver. And a big one of those passing plays came on a trick play thrown yep. by the fullback to Greg Little. This has to be conventional hurry up offense without timeouts. I don't know if I don't know if they can do it. That's yeah. a great point. Bobby Rome's passed for 31 yards. Yates just 55 yards on those 10 completions. He has no choice. He has to come out and throw the football if they get it back, and they're going to have to step up and make some plays. Under in the gun on second and ten. Quarterback keeps it. There's Jim Ponder. Smashes forward for a first down over the 40. 12 clutch yards from the quarterback, and he knows what it means. Jimbo Fisher was telling us in pregame that his shuttle time is 3.97. So even if it's a little quick here it's and it's good. a 4-1, 4-1, <laughs> I promise you, in the shuttle times, that's moving. It's the fastest shuttle time on this football team. Yeah, so whatever it is, three nine seven. He's a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. He was a yeah. good passing quarterback. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, people don't give him credit for being as good of an athlete as he is. Yeah, and that was a very good call, by the way, by Jimbo Fisher. Yeah, he, he can play on Sunday for sure in your mind. Oh yeah, no, absolutely no question. And hand it off. And this is a true freshman. Ball security <laughs> crucial at this point as the heels. Spend their final time out. On Saturday night, most of the country will see the Big 12 showdown. Texas and Missouri. Longhorns Hope McCoy says that thumb is okay. Gabbert playing on an ankle that's not 100%. He says he's good to go. West Coast will get Oregon State visiting USC. Craig, you're going to call that USC-Oregon State game. We all called the upset last yeah. year when they went up to Corvallis and USC lost. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking this week? Well, Quiz Rogers, he's still a good runner. He's got his brother, James Rogers. They're doing the same type of things. Is Oregon State's offensive line good enough to run the ball like they did last year during that upset that we called? That's kind of the question for the football game. I'll bet you that Pete Carroll will not get beat by that same wrinkle that got him time after time after time. That little, that little vanilla wrinkle? Or that little ro one Rogers brother in motion and then handed the quiz up the middle. That was it, basic. <laughs> you know what I was amazed by last year? I think we could all agree. We talked to those Oregon State players the day before the game. They were not at all intimidated by USC. Yeah. That was, that was really, really hey, impressive. USC had to go across the country and play Notre Dame, too, right? But the game's not in Corvallis, is it? It's time out. It's Dallas, I, we'll see. All right, let's see. Heels are now out of timeout, so if Florida State can get one more first down, they should be able to run it out. Second and seven. Keeper, Ponder, dragged down after just a yard. Third and six. This is a, diff a difficult situation to stop if you're Everett Withers because conventional wisdom says, well, they're going to run the football to try to milk the clock. But, you know, Florida State has a lot of those perimeter passes that act like run plays. There's a lot of possibilities here to prevent. And, and the fact that he sat there and watched Jimbo Fisher call a pass on first and second down at the beginning of the series. So he knows he's not afraid to throw the football. Well, let's see what they do. A completion for a first down just about ends a huge comeback. <laughs> and a very, very important win for Bowden and the Knowles. Keeps it again. This time they're all over Ponder. No way E.J. Wilson was going to let him slip for a first down that time. So the Knowles will punt. Carolina will have a long way to go. No timeouts. Try to get a field goal through and tie this thing. You assume UNC is going to try to come after this punt right here. Try to get a big block, but they're not going to have very much time to work with deep in their own zone. If they cannot get a big return here, they have no timeouts. Looks <laughs> like Bobby uh, telling his guys they, they probably should just take a timeout right and punt it. So they're hurrying. I don't know why you want to hurry this. Get the punt away. Not very deep. Good coverage. So 47 seconds. Tar Heels needing to march. And perhaps about 50 yards. 47 seconds. Set up a makeable field goal try for Barth. 
his career long is 42. Been an entertaining game. All Carolina in the first half. Bunch of penalties, very sloppy first 30 minutes, but the Knolls have caught fire after halftime. Ripped off 17 unanswered. Heels kicked a field goal to go back up by four, but Ponder putting a touchdown pass just a few minutes ago. Make it 30-27. Yates. Well, there's lots of time. Runs out of time and has to throw it away. He had two deep receivers, but nobody underneath. He couldn't set up to throw the ball deep, though. And the, and the four-man rush with the crossing up front by the defensive tackles forced him out of the pocket and didn't let him look down the field. No question about it. Now, just a reminder, what Chris just said, Casey Barth's career long is 42, so that means UNC needs to get to the 25-yard line to match Casey Barth's career long. That's a long way away. Especially since they've had so much trouble throwing the ball tonight. Yates flushed again, fires short. He does get out of bounds, but a very short game. Christian Wilson, the tight end, picked up just three. Play took eight seconds, not really helpful. Fellas, in the first half, it was North Carolina's defensive line in the backfield causing problems. Now in the fourth quarter, we're seeing Florida State's defensive line get it done. They're pinning their ears back. It's starting to look a little bit more like what we've been used to all those years. Dominant play up front. <laughs> they still don't know how to contain anybody on the run, but <laughs> they're getting after the quarterback. Third and eight, regardless of down and distance with the time left, the heels have got to take a shot downfield at this point. Instead, they dump it short. Roan fighting near the first set, didn't get it. He's out of bounds, and now just 26 ticks left, and it'll be fourth down. Yeah, you heard that over. I don't know if you could hear it over the microphone like we did. You got to get the first down. And they did. I think you got to throw it downfield. Well, I think what he's saying right now is we. Get, it's important. We need to get this first, no matter where we catch it, whether it's over the middle of the field or whether it's at the sidelines. Right now on offense, you're thinking completion or run the ball and clock it. And they run play action. There's no one, and Yates cuts it back. It's very near first down yardage. They'll stop the clock with 20. He got it. But again, they're burning a bunch of time here. Questionable clock management. Clock restarts. They've taken all this time, and they've moved only about 12 yards closer to a field goal attempt. Now you, now you got to pretty much throw a Hail Mary down there. Yeah, I think you got to throw it to the middle of the field. You got to throw a ball that's in the 15 range down to the middle of the field, then hustle up to the field, clock it. I don't, I don't know if you have enough time, though, yeah, quite, honestly. You, you have to throw it past the first down marker each and every time or hit a guy in stride, allow him to run and go get yardage. But that's the question right now. Is this passing game developed enough? Are there enough playmakers to go get these first downs? Another short throw. Ruled incomplete. That ball bounced up into the hands of Patrick Robinson <laughs> off the hands of Jonah. Did hit the ground. This would be a crushing loss for a team that, like FSU, was winless in the ACC but had a big lead on its home field. The crowd geeked up. Here's another look. But barring now a miracle completion. Ooh, dang. That that ball, did that ball hit the know. ground? I don't know that it hit I don't the know. Let's see that again. Doesn't no. look like it did from there. I, no. didn't, I didn't think so live. Drone got his hands underneath the ball, popped it up, and Patrick Robinson was there to scoop it up. That should have been a pick oh, six. They, you know what? The previous play is under further review. They're going to review this. This could be the end of the game right here. Now they blew a whistle when Robinson was running with the ball, yeah. which complicates things on this review. And Jimbo Fisher, the coach in waiting, all smiles. There's. Bowden and Chuck Amato. Again, despite all their troubles, despite the, the losing streak coming in, still alive in the ACC. Here's another look. It's tough to tell from that far away, but I think that ball popped up into the hands of Patrick Robinson. Now it was ruled incomplete, but from that angle right there, it does not look uh -huh. like it, it touches the ground. That's an interception. Mm -hmm. We have one other view we've seen where you could, I thought you could clearly Right away, see, see the whistle and the incomplete is. signal. Yeah, watch this. Oh, that ball, that did not hit the ground. 
That looks pretty conclusive from that angle right there. Yeah. Oh, great job. Yeah. Patrick Robinson great playing on a bum ankle right there to scoop it up. But again, the, there was a whistle and an incompletion signal after the interception. Right. Yeah, Somebody stopped eternal. pursuing Robinson. But back to back to the story of this comeback here. I mean, to to play so poorly and be so sloppy in the first half and fall down by 18. And then in the second half, to score 24 on 338 yards of offense and buckle down on defense. And, and not just that, but in a bigger picture, four losses on the season for Florida State. And again, they lost those games late. Big plays that did not go their way. Well, tonight, they reversed that fortune. They made the plays they needed to make. And Bobby Bowden stressed, or at least he's tried to stress, look, we're only at the halfway point in the season. Don't force me to make a call on my career right now. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. <laughs> I don't know about that, guys. Come on. Wow. Now. Wow. I'll take one more look. <laughs> Is this conclusive, this video evidence? This is the best angle to see it from. It looks like he gets his fingers and hands underneath the ball. Some some grass comes up, but I think that's, that's from just, his finger. It is. That's not from the ball. Yeah. All right. So All right. from the 31 with 13 seconds and no timeouts, I have to take a shot downfield, won't they? Yates rolls out, fires over the head. Six seconds, just one more play. Well, back at 18 seconds, that's why I said I would have thrown the ball down the middle, 15 yards or so, and clocked it. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Oh, no. 93, wow. defense. Everett Dawkins. Automatic first down. Well, no punctuation. That's penalty number 16. Oh, that is inexcusable. Right on the Carolina sideline. It moves him closer. And, you know, Yates doesn't have the, the strongest arm, Jesse, but, you know, now the... The end zone, 53 yards away. Well, I don't think they have time to throw it down there and kick a field goal. It's going to have to be a touchdown on this play. This is going to have to either be a bang-bang sideline play, trying to get the football on the boundary somewhere near the 35, but that's pushing it. There's only six seconds left. Gates steps up, fires. It's out of bounds, and with one second to go, the clock stops. Even if that ball was caught, that's not in field goal range. Poor clock management at the start of this possession really put him behind the eight ball. I just don't see why, and, and they're lucky that there's one second. You know, here, here at home, that's a that's a quick finger. And so <laughs> you got him at the middle of the field. You got to throw the football down deep. You know, you get the little protection. And you, if, at the end of the day, you got to get lucky on a play like this. Knowles, the three down linemen, eight men in the backfield. Final play of the game. And they sack him with three men. Marcus White finally has a sack in 2009, and it closes out a huge comeback for Florida State. They get off the canvas and get on the win column in the ACC. This is a bigger win than just winning a conference game. So you've got Florida State now 15-1-1 and against North Carolina. And three and four on the season, one and three in the league. Any mystery about a Wrangler five-star player of the game? Ponder career high. Again, people talk about Tim Tebow and they talk about Colt McCoy and a lot of other good quarterbacks, but he's a guy that's playing just as well as anybody else out there. Given the circumstances, one of the sweetest rallies for Bobby Bowden. He's down with Aaron Andrews. Chris, thanks. Coach, your team's down by 18 points. What does this comeback mean to you? After the week everything. you've been through. It means everything, Aaron. Uh, the, the first two and a half quarters is the worst I have seen Florida State play maybe since I've been there. We look like the worst football team in the country. You know what? But they, the kids, thank goodness, never gave up, came back and made plays to win. You told us these last three losses, that your team has managed to lose them late in the game. What changed tonight? Well, we finally won a fourth quarter. You know, I thought my, my formula has always been there's some you're going to win no matter what. There's some you're going to lose no matter what. But you've got to win the close games to have a good year. We finally won a close game. Go enjoy it, Coach. Thanks. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Who knows if it'll be a, a good year, but it's a good start to a comeback. Bowden and the Knowles roar back and win it 
my three. Sports Center is coming up next. Linda Cohn and Scott Van Pelt were over on ESPN News for Post Game Extra. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Craig, Jesse, and Aaron, and our entire team here in Chapel Hill. I'm Chris Fowler. Knowles win it by a field goal.